PTM Posse. Well, I'll say it now. The PTM Posse is all over it. Uh, they jump on. They're like, hey, I'm not hearing audio. And it's like, boom, I can fix that. I've got yeah, the thing. I, so, I have all the tools. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So thank you, uh, Matt the Benedetto fan and Beast, for uh, letting us oh, in. Man, Hopefully you hear us now. Beast has been, you know what, he's really come on strong in the last, I'll call it uh, three months maybe. That yeah, guy. Beast is a man. He's a ton he's a beast. of fun on Twitter. <laughs> like, you know, he just kind of like, hey, I'm a race fan, and I'm going to give my race opinion. And it's like, man, that's what we're doing. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. When you said appreciate, all like, there, is, there was all there is to it. Oh, that's that the gap fun. in my front oh. two teeth there. It no, no, that was an especially pronounced you. whistle. That was a good one. Um, let's see. There's a bunch of questions from the posse this time. So, we'll, uh, Good, man. Yeah, yeah. TJ. I got nothing but time, my friends. <laughs> awesome. Uh, did uh, I send you the man. last one? to go in there uh the stranger staying uh well no i didn't say that i'm gonna read it from my phone uh no uh eric kepner's the last one i got you're good then all right got it all all right we're ready to roll um tommy i can't remember if you've been on since we've done like since skype decided to start being weird and uh when when we do our intro (laughs) when we do our intro uh it'll probably cut out for like a minute and you'll be like i can see or i I can't hear you what's going on but it's uh, yeah. completely normal. Then we'll come back and you'll hear us again. So I'm clicking on the YouTube right now, fellas. So I'll I'm be in. able to. Cool. See, I can't see you on Skype, so I'm just yeah. I'm it's on the it's that weird deal. thing where it won't let me output. So do we have video. him? Uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we're ready to go. We're on the YouTube and everything. Uh, have we heard of Kona Brewing Company? Sure have. Matter of fact, I have been to that brewery. Uh, they apparently brew with coconuts instead of wheat barley. Yeah, yeah. They they do a really good stout, and they have. Um, what is they it like? Their fantastic surf... IPA and yeah. like a rollerboard pail or whatever. Or like, What's the one with the like surfboard on it? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. probably what I'm yeah. thinking of. Yeah, no, yeah. Kona rocks, and and they have great distribution, which means they probably have a relationship with either InBev or Miller Lite, and we don't poop on that because we get to drink their beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, craft beer that we get to have. Uh, yeah, I wore my Uji shirt today. Uh, Sherwin had yeah, his on yesterday. Back to back. <laughs> Boom. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesse's such a cool dude, man. I mean, gung nice ho guy. America and. Pull in for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wants have, a race. Tommy, have you met like, him at all? That's. Talked to him on the phone a few times. Oh, cool. Met him in person and one time, I can't remember where. I think it was in Homestead. Um, uh, just really genuine guy. Rooting for the guy a lot. You know what? We get, um, I think on the uh, on the show, uh, we've probably said it before. You never know. There's hits. There's I won't say there's misses, but there's hits, and then there's lighter hits. I would say, but uh, uh, and especially somebody you don't know before, you haven't heard them on the radio. You know, you see them on Twitter, and it's like, well, is that going to be translated into what you hear on the show? And I mean, he just killed it, knocked it out of the park. And I mean, uh, I think there became a lot more Jesse Uji fans that day. Um, well, yeah, they, he's uh, he's like the Energizer Bunny man. At least he's he just. Knows. All uh, <laughs> wide it's, open all the that's time. What we were talking uh, about. It's like positive, grief. positive energy guy. Yeah, Good yeah. Time. No kidding. No kidding. Uh, all right, Sherwin, you ready to get this thing started? Yeah, let's do <laughs> let's it. Let's do it. We got to at this point. Yeah, ten yeah. minutes over. And uh, what we'll do? Uh, I'll just say I'm recording, Tommy, uh, and then love it might the black key shirt. If we haven't said it already, that's awesome. <laughs> we talked about it a little right, bit. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, here we go. Oh, got to. Jesse I mean, I'm old Uji school myself racing with cap the, this week. Uh, nice. KC, uh, number four. KKR4. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. We are recording now. For the first time in history, I'm actually going to have to start over. <laughs> oh no! I had I had the thing on the wrong uh, uh, wrong uh, microphone. <laughs> so there you go, some YouTube extra. For, oh man! For well, us, you do it two days in a row. You well, I'm, yeah, I'm sitting here looking. To make a mistake. Yeah, yeah, I'm sitting here looking. And I'm like, why is it not picking up Sydney's voice on the uh, on the thing? And um, and then you you yelled, 
but it picked up on my microphone here, and I'm like, okay, right. I figured it out. Well, then if we're re- if we're resetting, I'm getting another beer. Do it. Yeah, do yeah, it. y'all will yep. get two. <laughs> For sure, get two. We're gonna do a reset button here. Yes, yes. I'm I'm gonna pop. Oh, this YouTube's one open. getting like the best content they've ever gotten. <laughs> right? Yeah. How about that behind the scenes access? <laughs> that stuff will not make the final cut. Everything in between. But it will be on the YouTube channel for ever. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. You know what? Let me let me double check. I'm just gonna make sure that oh, it's just working Chick-fil-A now. Chick-fil-A, like the best NASCAR drunken podcast. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Am I right here? Uh, much Am I here? Oh, nah, nah, oh yeah. Nah, nah. My man. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's much better. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, oh, it's funny. your first and it's your first stream in New Newworth. I bet Newworth? If I'm uh, saying it wrong, let me know. There's only one first impression. Oh no, he Ask Andrew So he Kansian. showed up this afternoon <laughs> uh, uh based on uh I think Kansian raked him in. Oh wow. So, so I got two names to awesome. mispronounce now. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, this is awesome. cool. Reset the field. You got it. Yeah. Joe, yeah. Joe. What's up, baby? <laughs> yes, someone says it right. Great All to right. see you, Joe, Joe. New Earth. Joe, Joe. Yep. Reset Matt the field. Matt fan beast. Needs Let's, to be a, I'm just going to run through the order here. Yeah, it needs to be a blooper reel. No kidding. Uh, uh, we, we've got plenty of those. <laughs> oh, geez. I just clicked a button that like took me away from the... There we go. Oh, uh, you're back. I'm back. Oh, I'm back. Funny. Matt DiBenedetto fan. Cliff Doherty. How about you, mofo? Let's go. Right Side's Only Radio. Uh, Let's see. Cliff, we keep seeing the promos. We got to see you back on the mic, man. Yeah, got to get back on. Hey, if you want to come on over here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can probably work that out. All right, Tommy, you ready to do it? We all love the same stuff. Ready to go. All right, here we go. That first time didn't happen. Uh, We are recording. Yeah, it didn't even happen. It's deleted. (laughs) Recording now. Welcome, y'all! Right. This is the Pre-Game Engineer Tailgate Mayor Racing Podcast, episode number 133. It's Thursday, February 8th, uh, 2018. I was like, is that the right date? Yes, it is. I'm Tailgate Mayor Rusty Wallace. I'm joined in the PTM Podcast Studio on the second night in a row, Sherwin. And I can't believe how long it's been since we last did one of these shows. <laughs> it's been like 24 but, uh, hours. Certainly, we wanted to do uh, this one. <laughs> We, uh, we couldn't decide when to do a show, Wednesday or Thursday, so we said, let's just do both. Um, as you can see, if you're on the YouTube, we've got a very special guest tonight. But before we get to him, uh, we got to let you know where this whole thing's coming from. Got to read this for the second time in two days, Sherwin. Here we go. Woo. This podcast is sponsored by you. That's right. You go to patreon.com forward slash PTM. Join the What You Drink Club for as little as $1 a month. Get that free koozie. Best part is, every cent in 2018, we're donating to sponsoring drivers just like last year. So join the PTM Posse today. Be a part of the sport you love. Our show tonight is brought to you by our official sponsors at the $5 and up per month level. That is <gasps> Catherine Kingston, Ashley Stang, Laura Henshaw, Harry Bolzania, Mick Rose, Aaron Bearden, Robert Keplinger, Tony Salt, Kobe McClam, Eric Kepner, Ryan Kiefer, Mary the Best, Patrick Cleary, Jeff Brown, Brandon Crowd, Kathleen McDonald, Stacey Wright, Brandon Carl, Billy Workman, uh, Rika Porter, and Jumpy Bob and Les Miller. Thank y'all so much. How freaking cool is it that that many people want to hear what we want to do? Not only hear what we want to do, but want to, like, support our cause right to donate to racing and right and that's really neat it's so uh, yeah yeah the crew is growing somebody uh beast says on the yeah. uh on the youtube yes <laughs> the crew is growing around i have to do like three. i love i love your read it's awesome <laughs> I, I use a lot of hands in that one so yeah <laughs> before uh before so we go, go ahead too and off bring the rails. In let's who do we it. got on the phone just to make sure everybody knows what we got here he's our inaugural phd of the petm yeah posse. the emeritus <laughs> that's right <laughs> he needs no intro our good friend tommy joe martins what's up tommy what's up boys i remember when that list was about five people right and now it's taking you like a full 30 seconds to read that thing off that's pretty cool oh man it's it's really so, cool what people are doing because uh especially with uh um you know, it, it, we're just we're just giving all the money away to somebody. Uh, but um, you know, just the fact that people want to want to support and stuff, I I don't know what to say. I, it's so neat that that 
uh, that that happens. All the sponsorship stuff we were looking into doing, and we we're I was like, well, maybe like twenty bucks a month, and then at the end of the year we'll have two hundred bucks or something. And now every one of those people is at least five bucks a month. It's like good grief, y'all are so cool. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know pretty what awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, that's fun. But um, you know what? Hats to you guys. I remember we talked early on in this thing. And I said, the biggest thing is just staying with it. And y'all have stayed with it. So it's awesome. Here we are again, <laughs> back at it. You know, what's funny is that I think we've started to give that advice to other people uh, who are, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's several more podcasts now. And it's really cool. And we'll talk to them. And, and we always say to them exactly what you said right there, which is uh, you got to keep at it. You just got to keep going week over week. Just make some time. Uh, just talk, do, <laughs> do like you normally do. You'll make mistakes. We just made one earlier. If you're uh uh, not listening on YouTube. We actually started the show, and I had the wrong microphone <laughs> selected. And so halfway through our intro song, I'm like, uh, this ain't right. Oops. And we stopped it and had to start over. So, uh, yeah, we didn't get Doesn't far. Doesn't have in. to be perfect. Uh, yeah, right. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's got to be out there. That's right. So, uh, Tommy, you have had to re- you, you did a refill during our, uh, during our little deal there. Uh, what you I drinking did. tonight? Uh, okay. We got to pour a little bit out here, boys. Mm, um, oh, here we I'm go. Drinking. Uh, hang on. Just got to pour a little bit out. Just got to pour a little out. Uh, oh, crap. RIP Coors Light. Um, mm. What was the official beer of NASCAR for a long time uh, now is no longer the official beer of NASCAR. So that's what I'm drinking tonight. All right. Are they, right. did well, they say what they're going to do with like the, Poll award is that different now? Yeah, it's different. Um, they've exited the poll award. They reduced uh, Brad Keselowski's uh, primary sponsorship to I think twelve races. Mm. Um, like, oh, good grief! We we got to call up Miller Coors and be like, "Hey, man, um, what y'all doing? I mean, look at me. We, I'm drinking. Uh, this light. is what we What's drink. I mean, you're drinking <laughs> a Miller Lite Tall Boy right now in the old school dressed white can." We've been Miller Lite supporters for years, and when we weren't drinking Miller Lite, we were drinking Coors. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we're kind of on the same page. I, I wonder what NASCAR is going to do to fill the hole of that sponsorship. Yeah, yeah. Is it uh, so? In, well, so that means in the last three years, Budweiser has is no longer sponsoring a car. Miller Lite is down to a twelve race primary, and Coors Light, which has been in the sport since I can even remember with the silver bullet car and Sir yep. Marlin and Kyle Petty and all this. And, and that, you know, even though they got off a car, at least they were sponsoring the pole award. They were the official beer in NASCAR. Now they're not going to be in it. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, here's the thing. So InBev is, has got, uh, you know, they've got control of all the Anheuser-Busch stuff. Uh, so all of yeah. the, uh, Kevin Harvick Bush mm-hmm. paint schemes will be owned under like the marketing brand of, of InBev. So there is that they haven't totally exited, but I'm, I'm more worried about Miller Coors. Like I, it feels like they're doing their yeah. best effort to exit and golly Miller was such a huge brand. And if you just go back to Miller hot life with Bobby Allison in the eighties yeah, mm-hmm. and then it, trans- it, and- it transitioned to rusty, which we have, a you know, <laughs> there's a namesake tran- thing there. A transitional <laughs> connection there. Uh, yeah. you know, Rusty with the you know Miller Genuine Draft and then Miller Light and now and now Brad. Um, so it's like, you know, I mean, I totally agree. Like, yeah, beer brands should be NASCAR, right? You're allowed yeah. to bring beer into the stands. Yeah, yeah. And, and like you, you would s- think that beer brands, especially major ones like that, Budweiser, Coors Light, Miller Light, they should be beating the door down to get on a race car and the fact that they're doing the opposite how does that not scare everybody <laughs> does that not bother everybody no kidding no kidding and i mean that it, it's almost a tradition right so you're sitting in the stands and you got your middle light and you're looking around oh that dude's got budweiser screw him oh there's a course oh, light guy all right start a fist like, fight <laughs> even yeah yeah how am i gonna know well, well, who to if fight rusty with? and if rusty and uh who would have been and who was the uh it was Ricky Craven in the Bud Car in the late nineties. If Rusty and Ricky Craven had got into an accident in the mid nineties, there would have been a fist fight in the stands <laughs> right. between a guy yeah. holding a Budweiser and a guy holding a Miller. Yeah, yeah, um, crazy stuff. Tommy, we'll get right into all the uh, all the goings on and everything. But before we do, car number thirty three for our one hundred thirty third episode. 
Um, car number 33, won most times by Harry Gant. How about that? Handsome Harry Gant Handsome in that Harry. beautiful green and white God. skull band. What a great car. <laughs> Wasn't it? 397 what, races. You know, you know when a car 18. is great? When the car itself has a name. So you that's got something called the Skull Bandit, and that's literally the name of the car. That's awesome. Is there <laughs> is there anything cooler than that? Uh, you Saying you get to drive the Skull Bandit, that's awesome. And how cool was it that the initiation of that team was, um, you know, the, the movie stars? You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. Smokey and the Bandit meets Stan Barrett and whoever else uh, that was involved in that deal. Yeah. Yeah, uh, to create a cool. cup car. That's pretty cool. Like that to me is like, you know, when they talk about, you know, like the silver bullet and the race car is silver and all that. I don't I don't know if brands are doing a good enough job with that nowadays. And, and I'm picking on sponsors a little bit there. But that's a good one. The one you just brought up here. First of all, here again, is awesome. Mm -hmm. and like an American legend at this point. But then the car itself was associated with the brand so well that you got the name of the car and all that. That is like how you do it. I mean, that is how you do it. That's a car and a paint scheme and and all of that. That's perfect for I mean, NASCAR advertising. How many other cars, and I, I can only do one or two, like have a name? Like the T-Rex car is the one I'm thinking of, you know? like Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, 97 at the shootout. Right, right. Or was like it, the, no, it was the all-star race. Yeah, 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 the built from the ground I mean, up. Gordon's, you know, Gordon's car, that DuPont car, and the Rainbow Warriors with the pit crew and all that. Like, to me, that's pretty cool. That's, that's a good job. Yeah, yeah. It. What other cars um, are you know, named? You could come up with some different ones. Uh, well, I, I'd have to think about the tide it. Tide Ride, I mean, maybe. Earnhardt's, Earnhardt's scheme. I mean, when it's you know GM Goodrich service and it's a guy True. named Intimidator and he's driving a black car, mm -hmm. like how perfect is that? Like that's pretty great. Yeah, no, I think Rusty made a good point there. Uh, tide Ride for sure. Yeah, yeah. Which we just saw show oh, up. Yeah, <laughs> and, then we and just... the feed there, um, and the ones that are like super iconic. Um, but yeah, holy cow! Yeah, for yeah. sure. Like, do we even have iconic paint schemes anymore? Let's think about that. I mean, how do you have an iconic paint scheme if you're changing it every other weekend? Uh, it's a good point. To your point uh, <laughs> about sponsorship, yeah, yeah, it's tough to say. I mean, no, as a paint scheme, I mean, like when when I mean when Jeff left, uh, that that was the last kind of iconic. I mean, shoot, I'm trying to think now because there's throwback stuff, right? Like. Uh, Dylan yeah. in the three doing the uh, uh, Intimidator kind of ish car. Well, which is the brand though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah like, exactly. We don't. Have, we uh, Goodwrench is gone because GM right. was GM failed worse than any other of the American car brands. So I mean, not to bring us down, but I'm going to bring us right back up. <laughs> um, you know, Dupont has uh, a history of selling things that are awesome to people that create brands. Yeah. That's what Exalta is. That's what yeah. Invista was. Now, most people won't know what Invista is because they don't have any relationship with nylon yarn uh, because they, <laughs> Everyone knows about like, nylon that's yarn. not a consumer product. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you only right. really have relationships with consumer products. So, I mean, I don't know where I was going with that beyond <laughs> what I just said. Yeah, but yeah. You know, hey. it's just sponsor info in the background of this. But think about like the the way that sponsors are changing here. We're not seeing big brand companies like I mean, Target isn't sponsoring a car this year. Like, how does Target not have a car? Yeah. How does Walmart not sponsor a NASCAR race car in the Cup yeah. Series? Well, how does I mean, just stuff stuff like that? I mean, Budweiser, Miller Lite, Coors Light, like these sponsors. Why are they not just knocking the door down to get on a cup car for a full year deal? And it's pretty simple. They don't see the return on the money. That's what they I was going like to say. They feel like they can get a way oh, better return I... on their money somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. simple. Without a doubt. And, and so and what's really funny about that is that when you try to connect it to what the other major sports in, in America are, we just had the Super Bowl, right? And yep. people are talking about, oh, my God, somebody paid four and a half million dollars for this really crappy commercial. I'm like, I, they only paid four and a half million dollars if the ratings hit the mark that they sold it at. Well, because on yeah. Monday morning, if the ratings were 10 percent less than what they sold it at, 
they pay 10% less. Right. Well, so now you got racing, which is on TV, and you want coverage on television, and the ratings keep going down, and you wonder why. And yet the price to sponsor a race car continues to go up, and you go, um, I mean, if you're an ad executive, right? I mean, that's what we don't do a good enough job of, really, as a culture, is put ourselves in somebody else's shoes every once in a while. Mm-hmm. So let's just think about this for a second. If you're an ad exec, rather than making the sponsor out to be the bad guy, if it's your job to spend the company's money wisely, how could you possibly look at NASCAR and go, yeah, that looks like a really good investment of our money? Oh, that's great. I, that's an absolutely fantastic. Fantastic perspective. So one of the things that I was asked today by somebody who is super smart, and I don't say that because he once hired me to do a job. I say that because <laughs> he is actually super smart. Is Brown noser. How is <laughs> I, how can we afford to sponsor this car at this level in this circumstance? And I am said, well, the activation situation suggests yeah. that the value of that sponsorship is X, Y, Z. But right. if we, it only does though, if we get, you know, X, Y, Z number of people to watch this race and the hardest, See, that's where I think sponsorship is headed though. Like what you just said right there, that word activation, excuse me, that's a really cool word. Sponsors like to throw around, but it's basically saying to me as the guy that's driving the car, they're saying, Hey, We don't really care about people watching you drive this car. We want to put our name on the car, and then we're going to do some cool stuff with the fact that we actually have a race car. Mm -hmm. That's really what that is. That's like the money we're spending there is just the ticket to buy into the show. But, like, I guess the activation would be, like, telling everybody that you went to go see the show. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that – which is, like, far greater influence – and maybe that's not the best metaphor here, but same sort of idea where the actual race car itself, where we used to think of the 90s, that's what it was. It was like, all right, put your name on the side of the car. Here's the check. Well, that's not moving the needle anymore, the fact that you have a car out there. So it's like not only do they have to pay a crazy amount of money to get their name on the car now, then they have to spend more money to tell people mm. and to activate the sponsorship about having the car. So it's like, why are you even spending money on the car? That's a good like, point. It make, like, what, you know, what the heck's going on? It's like, well, if you wanted to get a billboard, just go buy a billboard. But, like, that's right. activation. Like, and I've had sponsors in meetings tell me that. Like, well, I can't sponsor you for $200,000 because we're going to want to at least spend that in activation, and we really don't want to spend $400,000. Wow. And, go, and you sit there and you go – well, just sponsor me for a hundred. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the comeback. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've already told them how much it costs. So you can't really go back and be like, well, I'll, I'll do it for less. Cause that makes you sound like you're lying to them in the first place. Right. Cause then they're going to go, well, why, you know, were you ripping me off? So you just put in this no win situation <laughs> when you're trying to talk to somebody. Cause you sit there and you go, especially for somebody like me, where it's like, we're going to drive for a small team. Probably the best we're going to probably do is, I mean, then again, I say this, we finished 11th last year and, and BJ McLeod as a team had like four top 15s. So it's not like it just never happened, but for the most part, you're sponsoring a car in the mid pack. It's not going to be shown, but yet we still need 20 to $30,000 per race and sponsorship to just go be okay. Yeah. And you're like, how is that okay? Like, it's just too much money. Like nobody can afford that. And I've had people be like, well, I can give you a a couple thousand and that's like all they can give. And it just doesn't add up. It's just the whole numbers of the thing do not add up. And especially the return on investment is just not there. I don't think it is. And, And I sound like I'm rocking the boat here when I say something like that, like I'm a driver. I should be saying how great it is to sponsor a race car, but it's hard for me to sell something I don't deeply believe in. Like, I think it's a fun thing. Like if a sponsor just had a little bit of money to throw around and they enjoy the engagement of it, that's fine. Like somebody like FedEx, I've literally Mm -hmm. sat down with the marketing executive for FedEx because I'm from Memphis and I just had connections to be able to just talk to the guy and find out about how the sponsorship worked. More like research than anything else. And he told me that, that, that racing was the only thing that all of their clients said they had to do. 
mm. that they've tried to stop before. And all of the people they do business with said, Hey, you can't do that. We like going to the races too much. <laughs> and so <laughs> that's FedEx an was like, okay, okay, fine. Because they weren't going to lose these big contracts over the fact they didn't have a NASCAR team. So they just said, all right, fine, we'll stay in. And so they kind of got, they're kind of wow. like getting held at gunpoint to yeah, stay in, but they really didn't want to in the first place. And so it's, that's, that to me is like, if that isn't racing and sponsorship in a nutshell, like, I don't know what, what it means. It's like the sponsors that are in there almost do, are they doing it reluctantly at this point? That, that. Like, what's <laughs> actually question. going on? The ROI stuff is, I, I would love to see something on that. Um, uh, I don't know. And it, and it feels like just like we have the smaller teams coming in and stuff and, and small team stuff. We'll get to that in a minute too, but we have, um, you know, maybe it's a, it's a good comeback time for the small sponsors, the one timers or the, um, you know, whatever else they can, they can get some FaceTime there. Um, the, the ROI part is, uh, that's really interesting to me, uh, in terms of what, what, what do people expect to get back? If, uh, we, we just talked about Super Bowl, right? What, what was that? Yeah. You said $4 million, Sherwin, 4 million bucks gets you 30 it, second ad or something. Well, ultimately they posted, it was 5 million. So for I mean, 30 just seconds. say it's 5 million for 30 seconds, yeah. right? Are you going to get more out of that with all those eyeballs at one time uh, in this one space and be talked about in terms of the, you know, hey, Super Bowl commercials, if you get one that's funny enough, you're going to get your stuff, uh, you know, retweeted and uh, they're going to talk about it on the news like they did with Tide this year, you know, with Tide having all those, right. you know, cool ad ads and stuff. PNG spent. <laughs> so they, they spent some money on that. But the, the point there is you can do that or you can, you can sponsor – uh, what's four million get you? Or what's five million get you in NASCAR right now? Half a season? Oh, it it, 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 gets, it gets you five races. That's unreal on a Hendrick, on a Hendrick car. That's unreal. Uh, and, and five races doesn't get you nothing. I mean, think about dog days of summer and stuff, and and you know people going to the uh, or or even late summer and people are going to the lake and stuff, and they miss a race, miss two races or something. I uh, you might I, I guess the average fan. In what happens my point if the of view, car blows the tire? Right. What happens if you have an engine trouble? What happens if you just are a little bit off that weekend and you're running 27th, which can happen in the Cup Series in that long? Right. Right. And you're five so, million. You you go, hey, where'd that go? What happens when you're leading at Michigan and you hit the wall at a billion miles an hour <laughs> and you yeah. completely destroy the car? Right. 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 So. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say there. But now I would say to Diamond Gusset Jeans at this point, my <laughs> former sponsor. Yep. <laughs> they would say, "Man, we really hate that you crashed." Which unfortunately, that's something that happened a lot in 2016. <laughs> but hey, at least we got a little bit of TV time out of it. Which then again, think about what you're really talking about. You're talking about wrecking a, you know, a fifteen to twenty thousand dollars worth of damage to a race car to get fifteen seconds worth of TV time. Like, was that really worth it? No, it wasn't. It's a good well, question. Well, on a broadcast that only got 800,000 views. So, I totally agree with you, Tom. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. 15 if seconds for, yeah, yeah, for 800,000 people. That's a great point. Yeah, I don't know if that's worth it. And what's your engagement, uh, you know, on that? Maybe 1%, 800 people that might go, oh, Diamond Gusset, I've never heard of them. And, and 1% of that, 80 people that are going to buy something. Uh, 80 people, yeah, right. 80 people buying a, a 800 people check it out. And then how many of those people actually buy something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah 20, 20, right. So you sell uh 20 total. Yeah. 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 Or, or you might sell 50 pairs of jeans on that. And, um, right. I, I feel like I'm the $20,000 worth of damage on that car. <laughs> I feel like I'm pooping on, on Tommy here. I hope I'm not. Well, we, <laughs> no, we're not, not trying not to poop, poop on Tommy or diamond. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It. It's just trying to understand what the market value of these sponsorships are and what the relationships is between how you run the race, how you finish the race mm -hmm. and, and all of the weird ass things that can happen during a race, yep. which is including wrecking the truck or wrecking the car. Yeah. Cliff Doherty just asked, is this live? I hope my reading of that, um, uh, yeah, what, what are we about? <laughs> six answers that question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah uh, exactly. Actually, yeah. Point that got B sixteen twenty four. Oil companies don't even sponsor racing, so literally the people that sell the fuel and the lubricants don't sponsor the cars. 
anymore. It's, man. Like, what is going on? You know, so you got to ask these questions where you go, okay, wait a minute now. Oh, yeah, let's let's just take a step back now. and go, realistically, what mm-hmm. should this be? Yeah. It should probably be we get an outside evaluator tell us what is the sponsorship on the car really worth when it comes to eyeballs on the TV set, social media engagement, you know, other stuff that we do outside of just the track, like with the driver being associated with our brand and the stuff that he does. What is that number realistically worth? And don't get that information from a team. Do not get that information from NASCAR. Get it from an outside company that's sitting there looking at it going, okay, you got a million bucks. What is the best bang for your buck right now in sports? Because for NASCAR, the way that they're going to have to get that engagement back is they're going to have to be that, which is why tying this back, and this is like patting myself on the back, but whatever, tying this back to last year, I did a post with Jeff Gluck where I basically said, you got to pay the teams more and the teams have to be in the green prize money wise and all sponsorship just has to be additional revenue. So the team itself can survive and pay the driver in all three of the top national series. And then if they get sponsorship, it can just be extra and they can Mm -hmm. charge whatever they want to charge. That's fine. But a sponsor can look at it and go, well, or or the team isn't going to have to just do whatever they got to do to try to break even. You know what I'm saying? Like all the sponsorship money coming in would just be additional revenue. And that's nice if we get it, but if we don't get it, we can still at least get by. So, and that would really change things, I think. And and it would change the interaction with the sponsor as well, because they'd go, well, your sponsorship is realistically worth five or 8,000 or 10,000 or whatever it is a race. And you just go, okay, fine. (laughs) Like that doesn't bother me. Give me the 10,000. You what know, do you, rather what than do you trying think, to chase after the money. What do you think about like the micro transaction sponsorship? I mean, hell, what we're doing here with the with the PTM podcast that people are doing a dollar at a time, or you know, we've seen some amount of uh, success with like Jordan Anderson on his truck, and and you know, uh, he went through a lot of of trouble writing every person's name on there, uh, which is really cool. But um, yeah. I mean, on on yeah, on top of that, uh, just the the, yeah, the microtransaction stuff, and and if people if that is a viable sponsorship, we saw it with uh, uh, who was it that ran the Dogecoin car? Um, <laughs> yeah, that was Josh Wise. Josh, Josh Wise, Wise. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, is that a viable option, or is that something that's just kind of flash in the pan? What do you think? Okay, so this is like my hot take deal. Okay, um, and I'm gonna try really hard not to not to poo on this because the thing is. <laughs> <laughs> what you do with your money is completely up to you. Mm-hmm. It's completely up to you. It's your money. You can do whatever you want. If you love Jordan Anderson and you want to support Jordan Anderson, that's fine. It's totally fine. But Tommy Joe Martins, I'm fine. I don't need your money. I don't need your $2. <laughs> you know, like my race car to fix it is going to cost a whole heck of a lot of money. And I don't need your 20 bucks. Like I will figure it out. And what I really want is an actual real sponsor that believes in me and what I'm trying to do with my career. They want to sponsor me the right way. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm hunting for. That's what I'm sending out emails and press releases and all that kind of stuff we do to try to get. So to me, I just don't want to go on there and have to ask normal everyday people, whether they're my fans or whatever. To me, I just don't like that. I just don't like it. It's not something I'm ever going to do. And it's oh, yeah. not, I'm not ripping the guys that do it. I'm not. I get it. It's all done in good spirits. And all, all the people that give their money, it is totally up to you. You don't have to give them money. That's fine. But I am never going to get online and put up like a GoFundMe page <laughs> for me going racing. All I'm right. never going to do that ever because if I couldn't afford it, I wouldn't do it. Now, this is also coming from a guy that complained about how much it cost the entire time. Mm-hmm. Right? So I understand the oxymoron here. I mean, I get it. But – the fact that it cost too much didn't change the fact that my family had enough money to be able to do this for a while. So me asking somebody for 50 bucks is just, to me, that would be really, really slimy to so do my, for, my, for me and my perspective. My question isn't, I guess, aimed at Tommy Joe Martins as much as, is it a viable thing, you know, going forward or in the future or something if, um, Shoot, let's say let's say Casey Kane does this, right? 
and me and Sherwin oh, are, are fans of Casey Kane. So we sling 20 bucks a month each into that. And there are 50,000 other people, maybe not 50,000, 10,000, whatever number of people who do that. Uh, obviously, uh, you can do that math. That's only come out to $20,000 or whatever uh, a month. But is it is that a viable? Is that is that like a, a next step in this? Or like I said, is that flash in the pan kind of? Uh, this is what's happening right now. Who knows what will happen? Think about now. what you're doing. Think about what you're doing, though, fellas. I mm -hmm. mean, you're basically throwing money into just a pit, a fire. <laughs> I mean, it's really what you're doing. And, and that was my issue with the whole thing. It's like, okay, I go and ask people for this money right now. What happens the next time something breaks? Mm -hmm. What happens the next time I wreck something? I got to ask again. So let's say Casey Kane does that. or I mean, I know we're just throwing a name out there, so no offense. Casey, if you're listening to the podcast, we're not saying you're begging for If money, Casey's but... listening to this podcast, then I am <laughs> we have beside won. myself. Yeah, yeah. We've then we'll it? retire yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. We, we hit our yeah. pinnacle. If we get shot in the back of the head because <laughs> Casey's people are not super chill with what we're Oh, I'll beg about. for it. I'll yeah. beg for it. Yeah, right here, right here. No, I, just, I think to your point, I think you're making a great point, Tommy. I... So keep going. <laughs> so like you're basically Casey Kane is what begging you to pay his salary at that point, you know, and that's the issue with like Danica. That's the issue with any of these guys like Greg Biffle and all the people that are now like semi retired. Right. Is like, what did they get famous for being? They got famous for being a race car driver. That's what got them money in the first place. Mm -hmm. So now if you're not a race car driver, how do you make money? I, you don't you yeah, don't make money those you're are just awesome not doing anything. things yeah you know, but for casey kane at that point it's like casey you've gotten to drive for dodge at their peak you've gotten to drive for hendrick motorsports for years you're getting to drive the you know the vine family racing who's whatever clearly yeah, they trying drove to for richard petty program. motorsports when it was the crappiest it's ever been mm -hmm. but and the still point is that race. casey kane has had a 20-year cup career so if you get to the end of it and you're sitting there basically begging for money from strangers online, to me that is really degrading. Yourself. Oh yeah, absolutely. I understand. That's a good that. point. I, you know, then again, I feel like that's the way things are going, and and the way I, and, and there's the there's the uh, who's actually doing that though? Well, nobody nobody's doing that here yet. I'm I'm wondering in the future is this is that a viable option for people, and will people like Tommy? change your mind on that 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 it's begging for money as much as this is just how sponsorship works uh yeah right and that's the difference right it's like well, <laughs> what is the sponsor it's basically me begging a company for money yeah, right yeah i guess uh, in a weird a way it just feels a lot less slimy than asking individuals <laughs> for money and this is again this is a personal preference thing and if you ask every driver in the garage this question you would get a different answer for everybody you really would well we, i've no, talked to guys I mean, that said this is totally fine. I get it. This is just the world we live in. I've talked to guys that said that is a last resort, and I'm never going to do that ever. Uh, so you know, and I'm not talking about small level drivers here. I don't want to name drop on this deal, but it's like I'm talking about guys that are in premier rides right now that have said because we've laughed about it, and they've mm -hmm. gone, "No, this is not something I would ever do." So if you ask 40 people, you get 40 different answers. This is a good time to remind everyone to go to uh, patreon.com forward slash ptm and. <laughs> Uh, and donate boom <laughs> little as one dollar a month oh yes <laughs> Get no Get I, I love it i love it no that's uh, uh yeah i love this talk See, um, you guys are doing, thinking about this though you're doing this for free right now for free always will. i have no problem and this started out as a hobby and it's like turned into something that people are really engaged with i have no problem with you guys going hey you know what we got to set up time out of our lives to do this I got to set up guests. We got to do the production on this deal. We got to post it. We got to keep up with it. We got to run the Twitter account. I have no problem with you guys going, hey, would you mind kicking us a few bucks? What's wrong with that? And people going, hey, I really like this. The, we want to kick you a few bucks. The, That's fine. The fortunate That's thing fine. The fortunate thing for me and Sherwin is we both have jobs in the STEM industry and uh, we were like, ah, well, if we start asking for money, what are we going to do with it? And what a... Why don't we just donate to uh, donate it away or whatever you want to call it, sponsor a, a car? And to your point, man, I help me out with this. Help me out with this because we have been working 
uh, on. I, I thought it would be really easy to give money away to somebody. And it has been really difficult <laughs> to. It's almost impossible. Uh, to donate. We've got uh, um, 1200 dollars, something $1,263.58, I believe. Something yeah, like whatever that. Whatever it is. Yeah, I, I'm crazy with numbers, so uh, it sticks in my That's mind. That's awesome. So the, but we're trying to give it away, and we it's hard to do. Like people are like, well, you got to talk to this guy. Now you got to uh, you got to talk to this guy's guy, and then you got to do. It. I'm like, I, I think we're giving it. Just here's, what you, here's, here's what you boys need to do. This is re- realistic. Okay. You don't need to give it to anybody in NASCAR. Right. Because right. I'll tell you, well, we know we know that 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 buys like half a tire. Half a set of tires. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So exactly. That's that's a bad move. You need to give it to somebody that needs it the most and deserves it the most, right? So it needs to be somebody at a really low level, local track, doing things the mm-hmm. right way that people really respect, that we can all sit there and go, hey, that's pretty cool what they did there. They basically paid for a weekend to race in out of his eight or ten race season, and that's really neat. You know, so I'm yep. talking about somebody in like a bomber class at yep. the dirt track or something oh, yeah. like that. Oh, you know, shit, that, yeah. that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That that like type of thing, or, or, or like up at uh, oh, you guys the have one people nominate to go people to the, for this. The rain down. <laughs> nominate, nominate your local racer. Right, right, and and well, and we, we try to do that. We've talked about, uh, or we've talked on the show with uh, uh, Legends Car uh, racers, especially the ones out of Atlanta that we've gone and seen race, and then interviewed yeah. and talked to, and it's like, I let's give you money, okay? Well, you need to talk to these people and these people, and I'm like, Dad, gum it. And I, I use stronger yeah, language we, than that. Can't we just <laughs> give you a check and slap a PCM sticker money? on your car? <laughs> right. And let's get her done. Right. Shut right. up and take my money. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right out of uh, uh, Futurama. <laughs> Shut up and take my money. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, the thing is, though, boys, this thing has gotten so twisted. It has gotten <laughs> so twisted and messed up. That really good quality guys that are friends of mine in this deal are running through agencies that are doing absolutely nothing for mm. them and are somehow getting a cut of any sponsorship money that they found mm. that walks up to them. That sucks. And I have no idea. I have talked to multiple people where I have said, why are you dealing with these people? Because I just asked the question, why? I think this is this weird thing that I do. Um, and I, I found out that I guess I'm just kind of an abnormal person because I ask that question a lot. I just ask the question, why? You know, when somebody says, oh, man, I just put down this down payment on a $300,000 house, I go, why? <laughs> you, do you have $300,000? Well, no, but, I mean, that's just what the market is. That, to me, isn't like a good enough reason, you know? Like, that's just not It's not good enough. And so when people, somebody tells me, well, I'm signed up with a marketing agency that's handling other drivers. I go, why? And they go, well, uh, because they manage Kyle Larson and they manage whoever else. And, and I go, are they getting you a seat? Well, no. Okay, well, then what are they doing for you? Are they taking you to events and promoting you? No. Oh, are they doing something with your social media account? Or are they, I mean, what, what are they doing for you? Well, I mean, you know, if I get any sponsors, they help come talk to them. I was like, so you do the legwork and they come in and close it for you? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. they no, I mean, they're not exactly. So basically, you do, you do all the work and then they get a cut of it. And then it's basically your <laughs> money that you take to a team that you pick. So what the heck are they doing? It's right out of office space, right? Like, I'm a people person, dadgummit. What the hell is wrong with you people? <laughs> What's wrong with you people? <laughs> You know, so think about, think about like the way that NASCAR works nowadays. And the thing is, is you guys have been around this now. You've talked to enough people. This is real simple how this works. You have money behind you that you round up and you take it to a team. It's that simple. The team is not signing anybody. The team is not doing anything. The people that are on that list of people that are actually getting paid by a team, by a team, Mm-hmm. Like, as in, we don't care if there's a sponsor on the car at all. We're paying you no matter what. That list is so low, it could probably be less than 10 people in the entire sport. In the entire sport. Wow. Literally, everybody else has a personal sponsor behind them that says, no, 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 no. I just really like Ryan Newman. We want to keep Ryan Newman in the 31 car. 
It's something like that. And I, whatever, I just use that as an example. But basically everybody else is, they bring some sponsorship money along. I mean, I want you to think about John Hunter Nemechek right now, who's a guy that I've talked about multiple times because I think he is like one of the biggest badasses in the sport right now. He is just freaking awesome. That's cool. He's over there at Ganassi, right? Yep. They did a press release. They said, John Hunter Nemechek signed up partial season with Ganassi. You know what that press release said in the very next paragraph? What's that? It said, with sponsorship from Fire Alarm Services. <laughs> Who? <laughs> what do you What do you know? It was the same sponsor on his truck last year. Odd, oh, wow. huh? That yeah. he got the Ganassi ride. You think he got the Ganassi ride just because they were like, "We want to pay John Hunter"? No, John Hunter had a sponsor. He took it to a really good ride. I'm sure Chip Ganassi looks at John Hunter and goes, "You know what? I got Jamie McMurray. He's probably going to retire in a few years. John Hunter could be a badass." But that's not why he signed him. He signed him because he also brought some money. He wouldn't have done it just for free. That wouldn't have happened. Don't well, talk about happen. don't talk about Jamie McMurray like retiring in a few years. I always think of him as like the young guy. And if he <laughs> yeah. retires, then he's like then I'm old. He's but, like the second oldest guy out there now. I, I mean, look yeah, at this. I've got like, all this gray hair 40, and stuff. And, he's forty two now. Uh, don't tell me that. Um, he's twenty eight, and that's how old he always is. Uh, shut your will, mouth, Rusty. <laughs> I will talk, hit you in the face. I'm talking here. <laughs> We will fist fight after this podcast is over. <laughs> no, we're doing uh, it now. Uh, Jamie yeah, still Jamie runs. Max is an underrated guy. Man. Jamie Max, a really good driver. Oh, oh, I love him. He's yeah. absolutely fantastic. He makes a chase every year. He's won, yeah. uh, I think, five races uh, over his career, which means that he's should be lauded uh, at least as Christmas. good as uh, Jeremy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I forgot the last name. Um, that's fine. Uh yeah, I mean, like his consistency is great, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's where it's at. Where uh, you know what, uh, you know what's funny? What got us started on this whole thing was talking about Harry Gant, and we went down like the handsome grandpa. Harry. We went down the grandpa story like for the last yeah. thirty minutes or so, uh, which is awesome. Um, I want to close out real quick with Clint Boyer had three wins in thirty three. Joe Nemechek. The Cheerios car. We just talked about Nemechek, so a quick full full circle there. Uh, but Joe yeah, had one win in the 33 car. Uh, Ken Schrader had 100 starts exactly in the 33 car. Uh, I did not know that. Kenny Schrader ran the 33. 100, yeah, yeah. That's uh, I mean, that's like for three seasons, uh, three years or something. Crazy. Oh, wow. I Here's, think he was in the 33 when Dale Earnhardt died. So that's crazy. That could be. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my spotlight driver this time was Lou Figaro. Uh, nine races. With one win in the 33, and this is uh, I, I I don't mean Not to a bad percentage. bring the mood down necessarily. It's sort of a tragic oh story, if Here you will. Uh, he was born in 1920. He was from Southgate, California. So one of the I mean maybe so he the was first a Yankee, maybe the yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, as far as uh, uh, California boys, that's probably one of the first ones. He's well known in the early uh, in the early 30s, just as the Legend series started to like exist. Uh, he was well known as, Oh, that's the legends guy. So that's kind of cool. He won the 1953 war championship for late models. Uh, he, uh, decided in 1954, I'm gonna go race stock cars now, right at the, you know, uh, toward the beginning and the inception of NASCAR and everything. Uh, he, he wanted the half mile dirt track, uh, Corel speedway in Gardenia, California, um, and here's the crazy part. So we talked with the, you know, save the, save the speedway fellows, uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately he had a, a fatal injury at North Wilkesboro. Oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, so yeah, he Steven, died Steven Stephen Wilson was off. It was either 34. I think it was 34 years old is how, how old he was. So he died in 1954. That was, he's three years younger than me when he dies. Uh, the crazy part Holy is crap. like he's. It's been two lifetimes since it. That's why I like doing this driver spotlight thing. It's so crazy. Is how is how yeah. how long ago that was? Uh, but so he many would, guys that could that are just badasses that kind of get lost to history, right? And and so that. that's why I love doing this to to try to uh, you know if there's only twenty people listening, twenty more people will know about Lou Figaro. Uh, he was inducted into the West Coast Stock Car Hall of Fame in two thousand two. 
uh, and that that award was accepted by his granddaughter Tracy. So I, I think that's, that's awesome. really sounds like he should have been in the like TV show Hulk, right? Megara. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> there it is. So uh, hats he probably off could beat Hulk up like, and drinks up. If he to, was a race uh, car driver in the forties, he could whoop Hulk's ass. Oh, oh no, yeah. kidding. They no kidding. They, they didn't even know what power steering was for like another 30 years. You damn right. Right. <laughs> right. And I mean, nine races in the 33 with a win. And uh, the the year that he raced in NASCAR, he won. Uh, how many people can say that? That's like Rookie of the Year award. Well, I certainly can't say that. Right. I almost cussed right there. I can't. I can't <laughs> say that. <laughs> he almost got Rusty to cuss. Uh, yeah. That's like two out of the last three episodes, we almost got Rusty to cuss. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we got I, Brett Griffin to cuss a bunch last time. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to encourage Brett Griffin all that. <laughs> We've got a bunch of questions from the PTM Posse. Oh, that's right. I, so I, let's uh, let's get into those. So, Tommy, if you're willing to stick with us, like, we do have, like, five or six. Uh, it looks like five yeah, questions. Yeah. So let's do it. Uh, William so uh, Sorry, William. William Soquette or William Soquette? We'll say uh, I, think, I don't know if he's. We'll just pretend he's French Canadian and say so K. Yeah, okay. At William S O Q U E T, he says, "If uh, I, I like hypothetical stuff, if you had the option to run the entire uh, Xfinity season with a like a low to mid level team, or run the Daytona 500 with a low to mid level team, uh, and be done racing for the year, which one would you choose?" I, I would love the racer perspective on like how prestigious really is the daytona 500 versus you know running a whole xfinity series well i'm a little weird okay um, my dream my dreams have changed quite a bit so when i first got started in racing i told my dad i took a, a class at bondurant school when i was 16 years old and we went there for a two-day trip for a two-day course and we were trying to figure out am, am i any good at this like is this something that i could do and uh, the guy told me, he's like, well, you're not going to figure that out in two days, <laughs> <laughs> which that's kind of a funny thing to basically lead into what was my go-kart career. He said, you need to go run go-karts. Okay, fine, whatever. But they asked a question at the school where they said, what is your racing dreams? And I said, I would love to run the ARCA race at Daytona. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. I said, I'd like to do that once to be able to say that I raced at Daytona. Well, the first time we ever went down there, we finished in the top 10 right behind Danica <laughs> <laughs> with, with basically with our, with our own car that we bought for 10 grand. Wow. So that's, that's, you know, that was like, check that off. And then it turned into, wow, I'm racing a NASCAR. Wow. I'm getting to hang around. Wow. You know, I got a team owner that is willing to let me drive his car some. And so my, my kind of my perspective on this has changed. And, uh, I think right now, You'd ask me, okay, what do you do? Xfinity season for the whole year or Daytona 500? Well, that's my dream. I mean, that's my dream my entire life has been to race in the Daytona 500. And if I had an opportunity to do that, I'm just not going to pass it up. Because to me, that's oh. like I check that one off and I go, you know what? I, maybe I've never been in a great ride. Maybe I've never had the greatest career. But I got to race in the Daytona 500. That really happened. And so I would probably pick that over the Xfinity season. Wow. Well, so even that's... though that it was, even though that is like, still, that would probably be way better for my career than just <laughs> right. running the Daytona 500. I really believe that that would kind of be like the check it off the list, and I don't really feel like I would need anything else from this. That's a racer thing, though. That that's I, I love the racer answer. It's it's, uh, and and I think Kyle well, Busch is famous needs, for this. It needs no anecdote. It right. Just, you just. This is the thing that you love. This is what you want to do. Right. And Kyle Busch says, that, like, I, when they're like, well, we want races to race 100% every year. And, and I, you know, respect to Kyle on that. And he's like, I race 100% every time. I'm trying to win exactly. every race that I'm in. And, and I think that extends to this oh, right I here where, like, okay, well, I can have a comfortable mid-level uh, team the whole uh, year with Xfinity, but – Ooh, I could also run the Daytona 500. Who knows? You know, like, and also, could I win the Daytona 500 with a mid-level team? Absolutely, I could. Yes, you yes, damn thank right. You. You're damn right. God damn it! <laughs> let's let's cuss. 
I mean, let's oh, cut. Yeah. You're absolutely right because yeah. we've seen it happen. <laughs> yes, we have. I love it. Uh, next question is from Mick Rose at Go Ducks 42 underscore Mick. Do you think the sealed engine rule in Cup will drastically reduce the amount of practice time the teams will utilize as they learn to extend their engine life? That's a like that's a good technical STEM question right there. I'm digging it. It's really good. Yeah, you know, I really like that NASCAR did this. Um, NASCAR needs to look more at these type of things where they go, okay, this really isn't going to affect the product in any way. Like, it's not going to affect the fan viewing experience, but it's going to save the teams a ton of money. And you almost have to protect the teams from themselves, right? I mean, just stuff as simple as when you run the Daytona 500, you get to have one engine. You don't get to swap after the duels. Just something like that is saving a bunch of money. We're, we've looked at that. We actually called RCR. This is kind of a funny thing. We called RCR one year just to be like, hey, what would it cost? Just crazy thought here to rent an engine for the dual, for you know, for the Daytona 500. And they threw a number out there, and I'm not going to get into it, but it was basically, yeah, but it's double because you got to get two engines. And I was like, well, that kind of sucks. Yeah. You know, well, now that's not a thing anymore. You know, that's not a real thing anymore. <laughs> it's now it's thing. just you have to have one engine. So that's really cool. Um, I really like that. Is it going to affect the teams? You know, I still think they're going to do their thing. You know, I, I think they're going to do, they're going to max the engine out. Whatever NASCAR is going to allow them to do, they're going to max it out. And if they go to a 400 mile yeah. race and they say, okay, we're going to also get a hundred miles worth of practice in. Yeah. That's, that's what they're going to do. They're, you know, they're, they're not going to really change what they're doing very much. I wouldn't see that happen. So Andrew Kansian at K H A N T Z I A N uh, asked, now that we've seen a lawsuit over a charter, which, I mean, it's funny to me, like, oh, we have charters <laughs> now. Ha, ha, ha. And now there's a lawsuit with him. Like, oh, of course yeah. there is. Uh, litigation and NASCAR just, you know, go uh, just like that. Um, <laughs> uh, so now that we've seen a, less, uh, a lawsuit over a charter and the co-ownership of a charter, that's a good point, too. I mean, uh, charter stuff all that's over the place. That's the weird part. What do you the foresee? The co-ownership is weirder. What yeah. do you see? uh what do you foresee for the future to be for cup series charters, but just talk about charters, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you got to say about charters there. Okay. Uh, what uh, is the go. future for charters? <laughs> you know, um, when, when <laughs> I love it when Tommy Joe takes a breath. Okay. All right. You know, all right. Hold on. Okay. Time all right. to level set. Well, all right. The future of charters. Everybody I, get I it. Get it. A, uh, Dust off the soapbox. Here it great comes. Idea. <laughs> this is a great idea to give an owner a little bit of protection Mm -hmm. but what are you really protecting? Like, let's think about this for a second. So you're telling me I got to buy a charter to be able to have the right to lose more money. <laughs> what am I, what am I, what am I buying? <laughs> like what the hell, you know, what the hell am I buying? And so that to me is the crazy part of this is like, so why, that's why the field is changing so much. And guess what, fellas, you're going to see fields of 37, 38, 39 cars this year because nobody's going to show up because all of the crummy teams, no offense, already have charters now because there's mm -hmm. nobody else to give them to. So let's think about what just happened because I talked about this about a year ago. They said, um, well, it looks like RCR might go down to three teams or, you know, Roush might contract to a few teams or whatever. So basically every time a cup team, a top level cup team, and I'm even including like RPM and um, I don't know, like, uh, Le you know, Levine and uh, who does Almondinger drive for? JGL or no, JTG? Sorry, JTG. Yeah, JTG so all, of those, all of those teams even, if they can't get the amount of money that they are really looking for to go do it the right way. They're just not going to do it. Yeah. Like if Hendrick doesn't get the 30 million, they're just not going to go. And so now they have a charter and they're like, well, this is only worth something if it's out there running every week. So who do I sell it to? Right. Because they got to sell it to somebody. Well, we're reaching the point where those top level 30 million a year that that's happening fewer and fewer and fewer. And so that number of teams keeps getting smaller and smaller and they're sitting there with a charter and they're like, well, this was supposed to be worth five or $10 million. And it, 
this is no different than just regular economics, guys. What drives market price? Supply uh, and demand. The cost of stuff. That's all it is. <laughs> so that you sit there and you go, okay, well, I got this chart. It's worth $10 million. And then the only person you can sell it to is Carl Long. Because that's the only person that's got a cup car, right? He's the only yeah. person out there. Yeah. And so Carl Long goes, yeah, I'm not going to give you $10 million. I'll and give you me go, but it's worth $10 million. And he goes, yeah, I'm just not going to do that. How about you just give it to me, and then I'll pay you a little bit of money out of the yeah. prize money. I'll give you a McDonald's hamburger. Well, so that was yeah. my – And then my... they go, oh, well, okay, that's fine, because then I'll just get it back. And it's like, yeah, you're going to get it back, but who cares? Like, it's not worth squat because there's not any teams. Nobody is signing up to do this. So the yeah. people you're going to have in this deal, you're going to have a really small team like a Carl Long or a, um, you know, like a, a Rick Ware Racing and that kind of stuff. You're going to have like that level of team with a charter, and that's going to wind up just being more and more and more charters. And guys that are in the back of the Xfinity field are going to sit here and go, why am I getting my ass kicked and racing against 45 people and having to qualify in on speed to get paid one fifth of the money when there's 37 cars showing up in the cup field who cares that i don't have a charter i can just go fill out the field and not even have to beat anybody mm -hmm. and i'll just ride around on old tires and go with a small crew and who really gives a crap and so you're going to start seeing a lot of that and that those teams are going to eventually get a charter because there's nobody else to give it to so what's the history of charters you just need to go, what's the future of, or, you know, what's the future of NASCAR? Well, if you don't see big budget teams lasting forever, which they won't, if there's less and less sponsorship money available, they won't. So if that number contracts, then the charters are going to get sold to whoever's showing up, and that's going to wind up being smaller and smaller teams. And so it's just going to turn into this really weird market. Yeah. Oh. And so it's really beneficial for the smaller teams because they get a charter for basically nothing because it's not worth anything. But then when a big team gets a big sponsor and they go, oh, well, we actually need a charter for this year, well, they go back to that small team and the small team goes, yeah, it's going to be $5 million. <laughs> because yeah. they know they got the money. Yeah. So it's, it's just – it's really a weird system that I – you know, at, at first I was curious and now I just think that the whole thing is a mess. And, and the fact that NASCAR – created a rule that said, hey, one of the things is it sticks with a number, and if this number stinks for a few years, we can take it back and assign it to somebody else. A competition rule. And it's like, why do you even need a competition rule? You're not even getting 40 cars. Yeah. Well, like, what does that say? What does that say about, like, the whole state of affairs? It's like, well, clearly there's an issue here. Or the fact that they're, ele they're like, well – we'll take it back and that's the only thing you can do. And then they go, well, I'll lease it to this other team for a year and then get it back. And so that's what the small teams did. They said, well, I own this. It was like uh, the 15 premium motorsports. They had two, they had two or three charters or something like that. And they said, okay, we're going to lease it to another team. And then they finish higher in the points and then we get it back. And it's like, Oh, well, what are you talking about? This number finished 17th in the points last year. And it's like, well, no, it didn't. Like that was another team, and so that, just that whole thing just sounds really, really weird to somebody, me. And they need to clean it up. Somebody on the YouTube said, and, and I think it it perfectly described it. Said, "Boy, this charter thing sure is confusing." <laughs> and I think exactly what you're saying, Tommy. And and maybe we need to do another show where Tommy just talks about charter and what. Charters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What the hell's a charter? Yeah. What's going on? We've it's got a uh, like you're not even talking to the expert guy on charters, and it's like I feel like I know more than the normal person, <laughs> and I'm still like I don't even know. Right. Right. We got a question from NASCAR Nerd at underscore NASCAR Nerd. Uh I love this one. So think about like what Robbie Gordon did with Stadium Super Trucks. He pretty much invented that as a thing. So if you, Tommy, could start your own racing series from scratch. What would that look like? It would look like a series with a spec motor. It would look like a series where you really lowered the cost for tires and the need for tires, and you put some sort of rule in there that you could only run a certain amount. It would be a series that involved a lot of short tracks. 
it would be a series that had body panels that didn't cost a whole lot of money. So the really small level parts like basic springs that cost $20 and uh, shocks that cost a hundred bucks a piece and just some stuff like that. Just simple stuff. It would be a series that didn't involve carbon fiber or tungsten <laughs> or a lot of this kind of crazy stuff. And, um, go back to short tracks, man, you know, s- settle it there. I think that's where you really build up a fan base. Uh, so it would basically be a late model series, probably. I was about if to I ask what what's one. like the the you know closest equivalent right now. Is it late models? Yeah, I think that'd probably be the best thing that I could probably come up with. It would just be a late model series with a with a television contract, <laughs> really. So it would <laughs> yeah. basically be like the like the whatever like the Pro Cup Tour back in the days. Which guys, if you talk to a lot of the guys in the garage, like uh, Shane Huffman, who's a crew chief over there for the ninety nine team. Um, in the truck series. Awesome guy. Uh, he was in the pro cup days, uh, Timothy Peters. And those guys talk about that. Like it was just this amazing, unbelievable series that has never been replicated. And if you think about it, that's really what it was. It was basically a late model series that was on TNN. Oh, TNN, and man. And that's, that's really what it was. That Digging was pro deep. cup. And so Tennessee, Nashville. I just think something like that, like a national late model tour that had about, 10 races or 15 races or something like that. I think that could be, I think that would be probably where I would lean. Boy, this whole time I was sitting here thinking, I rock, I rock. How about I rock? What do you think about I rock? Because Matt Benedetto fan, as I was waiting to, uh, to say it said, we need I rock back. What's your thoughts on that? I think I rock's a cool thing, but it just was always so skewed towards the NASCAR guys. I mean, you come up with I rock and you, okay, here's what it is. And then we're going to only do it on NASCAR tracks <laughs> uh, <it's>, uh, <laughs> where, there's, true. where there's drafting and they're kind of like stock cars. And it's like, well, that doesn't seem true. fair. It's so like, it's like, like week one, week one, let's race these cars at, you know, Atlanta Motor Speedway. And then week two, let's put everybody on a bike in, at, at, you know, this uh, uh, dirt track in a dome somewhere. <laughs> Supercross right. thing. Like to me, I think a good place for that would be if you said, okay, we're going to do IROC, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to do Daytona. And then we're going to do like Bristol and then we're going to do a road course and then a figure eight like, and, then, and then like a dirt race <laughs> yeah. or something, you know, yeah. like that's, that's what you'd have to do. You'd have to just really diversify the racing series to make it fair for everybody. Like what good is it to invite Donnie shots if you're going to put them on like not even have a dirt race? It's like, yeah. well, that seems a little weird, you know? Yeah. So I just think that's the only fair way to do it if you were to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Sherwin, uh, we are at our uh, 60 minute mark here. Uh, did we get a strange Mustang that we're uh, going to bet? No, no strange Mustang this time. No, we, I don't uh, think so. With the, with the two days in a row, um, uh, Ashley J. Stang obviously very busy with that. So let's throw this one in there. Eric Kepner uh, asks, and, and I didn't even get a, uh, a Twitter handle for Eric Kepner. He might not even be on he don't Twitter. Twitter. No, but he, he don't. Uh, he he don't Twitter. He don't Twitter. Um, so if the company you work for, so this, uh, this is a good question considering all the sponsorship talk that we've had. Uh, so if the company you work for, so I'm working for this company, they decide to go whole hog and sponsor a cup car. Would you kind of, would you surrender your driver allegiances? Assuming it's not your driver being sponsored and, and walk the company line or, or where are you at? I, I'm trying to think, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So Eric, here's my deal. If my company, uh, I'm, I'm in software, right? Uh, I, there was a guy who liked NASCAR. There was like two guys who I could talk about NASCAR with in my company. Neither one of them are still with the company. Now we have like a separate office in, uh, we have, we have like 10 offices globally. There's one guy in, uh, uh, in Grand Rapids, PJ, if you're listening, you're the man. Uh, and he, he likes NASCAR, and he said he, he actually listens to the show, so <laughs> who knows? But uh, I get to talk NASCAR with him now. So, like, I uh, – and I even forget sometimes. We were on a phone call not too long ago, and we're talking shop or whatever, and he's like, hey, did you see that race last week? I'm like – and it was crazy because I was like, what race are you talking about? Like, what? I, it didn't even register to me that he was talking about NASCAR because I don't get to talk NASCAR at work. Sure. Right? And so sure. – so here's the thing. If my company decided to sponsor a car, hell yes, I will. Uh, I don't care if it's the douche of the universe. 
I'm all in. But that's because of yeah. where I come from uh, in terms of that. But Sherwin, you've had some experience maybe with uh, 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 companies you've worked for that, that actually sponsored cars. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I worked for a company that, that sponsored one of JTD Darty cars. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was like, uh, so how do you – I'm like, I'm absolutely not on the plan of you swap your loyalty to just because your company is on a car. It's like, ah, well, I'm going to give them for sure – some leeway right in terms of i'd love to <laughs> right i'm i, I would love to root like for if the, they run into your guy you're like well at least it's my company on the car right <laughs> yeah, well yeah. what's really funny about it, it i'd love to talk to you about it offline <laughs> uh tommy and maybe we can i'll just i'll keep it uh sure oop, excuse me i messed up my mic but uh no i um i think being a fan of NASCAR is about being a fan of something that you choose ahead of time, whether it's a manufacturer or a driver or a team. And I think you and I both decided to choose a driver as being very new fans in what? 2001, what, 2002, yeah. 2003. And it's not, um, you know, I don't, I wouldn't, you know, whoever I work for, I'd be like, hey, man, I'd love to support what you're doing, but, like, this is NASCAR. It's like, that would, to me, that's all the same thing. I kind of already picked thing. my guy going into this. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> to me, it's <laughs> the same thing as saying, all right, are, are you, okay, so you're a Brace fan, but um, we're choosing, the company you work for is choosing to personally sponsor somebody who plays the Marlins. Like, are you a Marlins fan now? N- no. <laughs> it's a good. Well, if, if we're not talking about, so what if what if it's the uh, Royals? You know, somebody that we're not even. Well, like, that, oh, okay. Well, I I, mean, I'll that, put on a Royals hat. Somebody, somebody neutral. Yeah, I yeah. Exactly. Already, I mean, we think I, last we we already did that, right? You know, like if it's Ned Yost who used to be a Brave, yeah, yeah. Then so, okay, uh, what well, if it's a Mariners? So I rooted you know? for the yeah, Royals yeah. in that World Series two years. Yeah, ago. yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I, it's an appropriate response. Yeah, yeah. Tommy, where are you at? <laughs> on that, on the oh, gosh, you know, but I never worked for a company where that would yeah. even be a thing. Yeah. At this point, I, you know, I would think that. I mean, when I was growing up a fan of NASCAR, I was a fan of, honestly, uh, one of the reasons I like Kyle Petty, my dad liked Kyle Petty, or he liked Richard Petty. And so I kind of just, we liked the Petties. But Kyle had the coolest looking cars. Kyle had the Melly Yellow car. Yes. Kyle had the Hot Wheels car. Kyle had yes. the, the Silver Bullet car. And I was like, oh, those are awesome. And so then I was like, oh, I really like Kyle Petty. And he just turned into my guy. So it was like, so it was completely brand identification. They did a good job on the car. And then I was like, oh, that's my guy right there. And, you know, I didn't really know enough of it going into it. And then you find out about the guy and you're like, yeah, I really do like this guy. Awesome. And so that's, you know, that that was kind of my way into it. And I think that is probably still a a real thing to a lot of people. Right. And And that's why I get a little irritated when sponsor and brand identification is jumping around so much. It's like that's. I couldn't even imagine that if Kyle Petty at the time, like I saw that Hot Wheels car and they're like, oh no, but he's not in the Hot Wheels car this week. He's in the, you know, the Love's Travel Stops car. And you're like, well, what happened to the Hot Wheels car? That one looked awesome. (laughs) Right? Yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, but he's only in that for five races this year. You're like, what? Well, what what the heck? (laughs) Well, I can't even, so he's got one car that's yellow and one car that's orange and one that's blue and one that's red. It's like, I can even find Kyle every week. And I don't know. I just think we we really missed the boat on that with the way that sponsorships have gone. And NASCAR and all the teams would sit there and say, well, that's just how things changed. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like we can get back to that somehow if we just make it more affordable and and a better, just a better return on the money for, for brands. That's a, that's a good full circle. And with that, I think we're, we're going to have to uh, close it out, man. Every time we talk, it's like 
oh, an hour and 10 minutes later, uh, we we better start closing out the show or whatever. I feel, yeah, right. I know uh, it. Enjoy we, it, guys. Well, no, we got to make it uh, We got to make it less than however many weeks it's been since we – or months it's been since we talked. Love doing oh, this yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, longest yeah, gap yeah. since we started talking to Tommy. It, it could be. Yeah, yeah. So, Tommy, close us out. Tell us uh, what you're up to, where people can find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, Tommy Joe Martins uh, driving for BJ McLeod Motorsports. If y'all like me, which I don't know why you would, uh, but if y'all like me, you need to follow BJ's team. They got Ryan Ellis, uh, Ray Black Juniors, uh, Cesar Baccarella, uh, BJ McLeod. Uh, the the team page, team uh, BJ McLeod. I think is the name of the thing. I got to remember it now on the Twitter <laughs> and everything like that. Um, Really good people, all really good people, and I'm just really lucky to have a chance to drive uh, their race cars this year and really looking forward to a partial season with them and getting back in the seat. My first race is going to be in you guys' neck of the woods, Atlanta, coming oh, up in like Woo-hoo! two and a half weeks. Yes, it is. Uh, and I am pumped up, so ready to get back in the seat. That's awesome. Well, tell BJ and Ryan we'd love to have them on the podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. And- Absolutely. Will do. We'll do. Yeah, yeah. And, and we'd uh, love to see you guys at Atlanta Motor Speedway. We'll figure it out. We're going to have to find yes. some. Yes, y'all text me. I mean, we'll it's, it's it like out. it's right over there. We'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll figure it out. So with that, Sherwin, let's uh, let's close this thing out. Man, Tommy, hang on the line for just a little bit. We'll be there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll bring the music Woo! up and do our thing. Y'all know where to find us at PTM Podcast. PTMPodcast.com. Search all the social media, all the – Places where you can oh, listen you just to Google podcasts, it. Google it, PTM Podcast, you'll find us. Uh, there's been people reach out to us recently that just found us randomly. Uh, so, love you. Uh, thank you for being a part of the show. Thank you for hanging out. As always, I'm Tailgate Mayor Rusty Wallace. And, we'll and I'm join you all next week. Andrew Sherwin, pregame engineer, yeah. at Andrew L. Sherwin on the Instagram. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll do this again. Let's do it again, Sherman. Let's do Why it. don't we do this again? Yeah, we did 133 of them. Let's do 134. Yeah, I well, think maybe next week sometime. Yeah, maybe we'll retire after that, but it, we'll at least do 134. <laughs> that sounds like a good uh, yeah, idea. Yeah, uh, got big stuff coming up. We got cars on the track this weekend. We'll be talking about that. We'll be oh uh, yeah. I mean Jesse Awuji. Yes, sir. PTM alum. Yes, sir. Arca racing on Saturday afternoon. Absolutely. We'll talk to y'all next week. Thank you for joining. Excellent. We're still live on the YouTube, Mr. Uh, Tommy Woo-hoo! Joe, but we're uh, we're all done with the uh, recorded portion. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, that was awesome, dude. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, let's just go. Let's just keep going. Let's, let's keep sh- it going. Uh, let's just keep Don't going. There was, why not? What What do you was got? It? Let's Let's do the off the record stuff. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, well, I mean, off the record, but still on. Well, YouTube. I mean, not that you want recorded, but I mean, like Tommy just being Tommy. Tommy being Tommy. I mean, I, we I, there's so there was so much to talk about there. We, I mean, we didn't even get to what what Tommy's up to. What's your story, man? Uh, running for BJ, and you know it's been a weird few months, man. It's uh, we've had we've seen the shutdown of Martin's Motorsports, which that was a bummer. Um, uh, had the opportunity with with BJ to run uh, the partial season, and that's cool. Um, but Dude, you did so you did the periscope on that and uh i don't know if he was if, yeah. if it was your side or my side or something but like I, w- I was sitting there refreshing like come on i gotta hear what tommy's saying jesus what what the hell <laughs> like it was yeah the thing like cut out in the middle of it i mean whatever it was just i was kind of committed at that point i literally had driven around in my truck for like an like 45 minutes trying to find somewhere that had some wi-fi <laughs> to be able to do that, it was a, it was a struggle. Chris so I just said, screw it. I don't even care at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and posted it up there. I just wanted to say something. I mean, it's mainly about my guys. They just worked so hard for a couple of years. That, it was it so was heartfelt. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can that's tell that's stuff. genuine. Um, I'm pretty sure I cried. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. You're just in like all honesty. I because that's the way I do. <laughs> I, I only I only have one emotion, and that's all of it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I, we were just so invested in it. Uh, it was just hard to, to walk away. But I know it was the right choice for my family. We were basically staring down the barrel of no driver bringing any money. 
no sponsors outside of us. And it was, well, are we going to spend this $150,000 more that we're going to need to spend to get ready to run the year in the hopes that somebody will eventually step up and bring us some money? And it was just, no, we're, we can't do this. You know, we've already done this a couple of times, which, you know, I say that, that my family was able to do that. You know, it's not like I'm just super rich. I'm not. No. You know, that's no my dad owns a construction shit. business and they <laughs> had enough money to be able to do that. He pours concrete for a living. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not like we're just unbelievably rich. It's just that his business did pretty well for a few years and he basically dumped all of the money from that and even had to go into putting the house up, you know, for, for loan basically to run a race car for a couple of years. And it was just to the point where I said, you know, this is just not happening again. It's just not. And just like we talked about with, um, you know, reaching out and asking for donations via whatever. To yeah. me, that was worse where I'm sitting here going, I'm compromising the future of my family for me to drive race cars around in a circle. And it's just not, it was just not going to happen. It just wasn't going to happen again. So I'm in a position now where with BJ, uh, I'm going to get to just show up and drive. I don't have to worry about anything else. And that's a, an amazing feeling. And he has treated me way better than I ever thought I would ever get treated by any other <laughs> owner. It hasn't been like, how much money can you bring to the team? It hasn't been any of that. It's just, we want you to show up and drive. We think you're pretty good. And we think you get the most out of our equipment. And the guys really like working with you. You do a lot for our team outside of just bringing a bunch of money and so we help where we can and i get to show up and drive uh and if they get an opportunity to get a driver that actually can bring a lot of funding to the team that helps the the team i'm all for it that's great uh, you know so how many races am i going to get to do i'm going to get to do some and i'm perfectly fine with that i, I don't need anything else and the fact that i'm even getting this opportunity is pretty amazing to me is that uh, is it is it a relief? I, I don't know how else to put it, but is, is there like a relief element like that you don't have to run every bit of it? Or is there a bit of like, man, I, I really wish I was doing this or that or whatever? I mean, there's races on the schedule that I sit there and go, man, I want to I want to really race Indianapolis. I mean, I want to really race Daytona. Okay. I want to really race Atlanta. I mean, that was one of them. I mean, I, that's you know, yeah. that kind of like a home track for me as a kid. So. That's a big thing. Yeah, there's ones that I pick out like that, but is it a relief that I don't have to be out there every week? I don't know. Or more a I relief mean, that you I, don't I, have to put that work or that, that I don't know. Is there, a, maybe I should ask you this way. Is no there problem. less there's effort? No liability. What's that? That's, that's what's the relief here, y'all, is that there's no liability. So yeah, yeah, yeah. why did I write a blog? Why did I do all the stuff that I've done on social media? It's because there was so much stress involved with, Man, my family's house is up on a yeah. lean right now, and we just tore up a twenty thousand dollar race car. Mm -hmm. You know that that nobody knows that level of stress, um, and the fact that people like made fun of me and stuff for it is to me just still one of the weirdest things in the entire world. Uh, but that stress level is gone. Like I show up, uh, we ran a race at Bristol last year. I think I was running around 25th, 26th, whatever. Uh, and we were actually getting a lot faster at the end of the race. We had already, we were already down a few laps at that point, but we really started coming on and we're racing with some really good cars that were lead lap cars and running around them where we had finally got it kind of dialed in. Honestly, I had finally kind of figured out Bristol where I was like, okay, I got to run this thing up by the wall. And I was kind of learning and it was really cool having a lot of fun. And we broke a lower control arm in the middle of the corner. Yeah. Just smashed the thing to pieces. Oh, geez. And that was a bummer. And I got out of the car and I was like, ah, man, that sucks. But BJ, B and BJ was like, what are you talking about, man? You sure have a hell of a race. Don't worry about it. We'll fix it. Wow. Wow. So there so, is no stress to me with this. Yeah, it's, yeah. We just want you to go out there and do the best you can do. Don't Please don't tear it up. But if you do, you know what? We're going to figure it out and we know you're good. Yeah, that's what I... <laughs> like that. That's just good. That's why my mood on this has changed so much. I just... Even if BJ's team, and he went on, um, I think he went on uh, Front Stretch and did an interview with Dustin Albino, who I like a lot, uh, where Dustin asked him some good questions. And he basically said, look, we know what we are. Mm -hmm. We're a 
on a good day, we're a 20th place team. On a bad day, we're a 29th place team. And that's probably what we are until we get some real money to change this. And I'm at the point in my career where I'm just looking to get a ride. Like, I got to be out here to matter. Like, I can't just not matter. I can't just go off somewhere and go, oh, well, I'm above a 28th place ride because I'm not. First of all, I'm not. <laughs> it's not like I've won a bunch of races. I just need to be out here competing and, and to be it and to be able to do it with the guys like Keith Wolf, who's uh, that was my crew chief last year, and we're going to get to be paired up again that's this cool. year. Uh, that's really cool. I mean, they're just good people. They're just really good people, and they love racing. And uh, you know, if we finish thirty third one day, whatever. I'm a competitor. I get pissed off. I want to do better. <laughs> uh, but at the end, is that really changing my life? No. Uh, but finishing 11th last year with a small team at, at Iowa and being this close to a top 10, I mean, that to me is like, you know what? If we can do it, like, why not? Cool. Are you still, you know, have, are you still doing, uh, so that, that helps me up. are you still doing the, the, um, uh, what is it like the, not training, but like the driving school stuff? Yeah, that's why I'm actually out here in Vegas right now. I'm working at, uh, at the driving school out here. So that's like the dirty, dark secret, right? <laughs> it's like NASCAR drivers don't make any money because all the money we, we would possibly get from a sponsor has to go to the team to be able to field the car that if I don't get in the car, I'm not a NASCAR driver anymore. Uh, and, yeah. and that's, you know, to go into this like weird thing. Is that know, bullshit just, though? I mean, in we're just reality? chatting now, but it's like, what is a NASCAR driver? Is a NASCAR, is, is Danica Patrick a NASCAR driver? Technically she will run the biggest race in the sport this year, but she's only one in, she's only going to run one race. Mm -hmm. So is she a NASCAR driver and uh, I'm going to pick on somebody here, but like is somebody that's on social media and posts about a late model race at Hickory, North Carolina, but it's a sanctioned NASCAR yeah, yeah. late model race. Is, is that a NASCAR driver? Like to me, that's not to me, a NASCAR driver is somebody that's out there in the top three series that is running a decent amount, but some people use that as like, well, I ran one truck race last year and I'm an NASCAR driver now. It's like, well, yeah, kinda, <laughs> kinda. That's, a, that's the word like, I was about to like, use. I don't <laughs> know. Like, yeah, kind. I mean, kinda, but are, I don't know that there's something about that is a little odd to me. And so I got into this big fight. I'd say big fight. I can get a big fight. I just basically posted on Twitter. That's not a fight. I got a big, <laughs> I got a big debate on Twitter over uh, NASCAR's marketing, and they've done so because Kyle Busch stirred that up. It was they're marketing the young drivers, right? And uh, or they're not marketing the older guys. And I basically chimed in and said they're not marketing any of us ever. Like I have never been invited to any of those media sessions or any of that kind of stuff. And it's like, if you're not driving for one of the top teams, you're just not ever included in mm -hmm. that. And that is so crazy to me. It's like, we're in a sport where realistically y'all, I mean, how many of there, how many of us are there that are going to legitimately run half the season in a top three national series, like maybe 75 or 80 of us in the world, in the world. And so you're not inviting all of It's like, it's not like you don't have enough room. <laughs> like there's 80, it's 80 of us. It's not that many. So how, how are these people not even being included at all? And I just think NASCAR's job with marketing as a whole is, off like there's a place for the guy finishing 27th just like there's a place for the guy finishing third you don't have to act like that guy doesn't exist and and i've just felt a lot of disrespect from that where it's like you look down your nose at me like the, on the competition side they're like god we need people to fill out the field thank god you guys showed up and then on the marketing side they're like mm -hmm. yeah but we don't want to talk about those guys because it's like what are we doing we're sitting here saying well yeah i can't compete with those people not because i'm not good enough it's because I don't have the resources that they have. And NASCAR is all about being like, no, nah, we, we don't want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. I, that's an important <laughs> that point. That is super important. Is NASCAR, uh, we don't want to talk about that part. Uh, they're going to have to talk about it soon. I mean, shoot, NASCAR didn't have uh, – they still don't have, like, monster, uh, like, re 
upped. They, they don't have a sponsor as of no, next they, year. No, they don't have. No. Uh, I, I think uh, the Beast was longevity. saying. The Beast was saying earlier that uh, they they don't have the Pole Award sponsored yet. Well, so one of the things I want to talk yeah. about uh, as of we, right now, they don't have a Pole Award yeah. deal. Done. Yeah, we didn't we didn't get to talk about this with you. Uh, I got to run in the boys' room. Or I'm yeah, just like so. I, I'm, <laughs> I I got a ton of stuff to talk about. So we're good. Uh, Tommy, I didn't get a chance to bring this up on the show that we recorded for iTunes. This is going to be on i. Uh, this is going to be on YouTube, so everybody get to see it. But like one of the things sure. that last night when we talked to Brett Griffin about, he was very diplomatic on both sides of the garage in terms of like how do we represent both sides of these garages uh, with the way that we're doing business now because. The, the business model for the you know the half of the garage that's not ridiculously Hendrick or Roush or well Roush is probably a bad example now but Gibbs Hendrick and Stuart Haas is how do we represent that side of the garage uh, at the cup level and let, I mean you could extrapolate it down to uh, Xfinity or Cup because it's basically the same thing is how do we get these guys the exposure that they probably deserve or, or that they need in terms of uh, wanting to gather sponsorship. Yeah, I, I, but I think it's you just pointed to something right there. The fact that we even have to say both sides of the garage, like, is that not a problem? It's one damn garage. We're all in the garage. We're all out there trying to do the best we possibly can with what we've got. Some people just have a lot more, and that is fine. Like, I get it. I wish the field was a little bit more even playing field, but that's fine. But don't act like I don't exist. Like, don't look down your nose at me. Don't skip me over. Don't don't let me go out there and have my family put their house on hock for a year for me to be able to run in the truck series. We have literally the worst luck of anybody in the entire truck series this year, which actually I have NASCAR analytics to back that up, which I think is hilarious that we were literally the most unlucky team of the entire truck series season. See, I want to see those stats. I'm a a math nerd. It's on NASCAR analytics. I'll whatever. I'll, I'll show you guys the breakdown one time or something like that. It was like, we had the most crashes that had a terminal crash frequency of anybody in the entire series in 2016. Where it's like other people had crashes, but they weren't terminal. Mm. It was basically like every crash we had was a complete terminal crash. And so it was like the unluckiest of any driver had been the entire time. Whatever. That's beside the point. Point being here is like, okay, we do all of that to put a truck out there all year. I compete all year. All these unlucky breaks. And I don't even get an invite to the damn banquet at the end of the year. Like you don't even invite me to the banquet. I, I don't know. That. Yeah, I mean, I mean this is like I, new information. You're starting to get me pissed. Me? <laughs> right, right. Like, like what we, the hell I mean, are y'all doing? And so I see, I see stuff that like comes out from NASCAR where they go, "Oh, we're partnering with this new PR firm to promote the drivers." And I was like, "Well, nobody's reached out to me. Nobody's talked to me about promoting me." And it's like we're in a sport that is completely dependent on my ability to go get money from sponsors. Which, how do you get money from a sponsor? You appear like you are a brand of yourself that is worth sponsoring. Well, how do I get to do that if y'all never let me on TV? If you guys never bring me to any events? If you guys never invite me to this kind of stuff? How the heck am I supposed to promote myself? And that's why you see all these guys, and this is something we touched on earlier, where you see a lot of these drivers, they go, well, i got to line myself up with a marketing agency. And it's like the marketing agency really doesn't do crap for them, but they feel like they got to be with somebody because nobody else is doing anything. So it's this weird deal that NASCAR has done a horrific job with, flat out, a terrible job. And I actually got responded to by the president of NASCAR himself, Brent DeWar, mm-hmm. who has a marketing background, right? He was the chief marketing guy for NASCAR before he took the presidency. And he said, wow, you bring up a lot of good points. It's like, well, if the old president is sitting here going, yeah, actually, you know what? We could probably do a better job. That probably sounds like you could do a better job. <laughs> well, he's no actually. Do a better job. 
He's, and then I found out that, that NASCAR announces the very next week and they go, well, we've partnered up with an outside PR agency. And I just, I scratched my head. And I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. You've basically got a marketing headquarters in New York that NASCAR pays for. I don't even know how many people work at that place. They have a marketing office in Los Angeles. I don't know how many people work right? there. Was... It's like, what the, what the hell are those people doing? Right. That you got to turn outside marketing agency like what <laughs> why are we paying those people mm-hmm. you know why why is, why is my my uh my entry fee and my license cost why is it paying for an office in new york yeah like <laughs> that that kind of stuff when you sit there as a competitor and then you're like and then you don't invite me to the banquet and then you don't invite me to the to the uh, the media day like, I didn't even get invited to Xfinity Media Day this year. I heard nothing about that. I saw <laughs> posts on Twitter from people that were like, uh, even guys that are part-time drivers that have announced, I'm running a part-time schedule. They're there doing a photo shoot. I didn't even find out about it. I had to find out on, about it on Twitter. That's wild. Like, so, what the heck is going on? All right. So, uh, from your perspective, <laughs> Tommy... <laughs> This uh, so we we have wanted to talk about this a ton because that whole marketing issue is such a big deal uh, because like it's been a big it's, deal in Cup uh, and it's been a big deal in Xfinity and it's a big deal in trucks and and uh, so why don't uh, why don't we support like as a NASCAR community why don't we support like everybody like why don't we like you. I have a ton of personality. Why wouldn't we want to support that in either the truck series, like which you ran last year and have run for several years, and now in Xfinity this year? Why wouldn't we want to support everything that you have to say on a NASCAR platform? It it just doesn't right. make sense why we wouldn't do that. So NASCAR, what is the biggest complaint that a lot of NASCAR fans have? The biggest one that I see is, well, you know, there's just no guys like there were in the old days. We just don't have those heroes like we had in the old days, the guys that are crawling under the car, working on their own stuff, and, you know, small, you know, guys that are, you know, they make it big and all this kind of stuff. And it's, I'm sitting here laughing my butt off because I go, do you even know about Mike Harmon? Mm. Do you even know about Carl Long? Do you even know about some of these guys in the back of the field? Mario Goslin, BJ McLeod? Do you, do you know about any of these people? It's like NASCAR is sitting here going, man, we can't connect to the old fans anymore. And it's like, hey, idiots, literally <laughs> look in the back 15 spots in the field. Morgan Shepard, that's a great one. I just saw that on, on the YouTube thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, how, how, Derek Cope, like, how are we not talking about these people? And They're a- literally exactly what you're wanting to connect to that, to kind of bridge the gap to that older – fan that's like man it's just not like it used to be like they're literally right there on the grid and we never talk to them and the those are the, like uh, you just named all the badasses of nascar you know <laughs> yeah, there was some badasses in that right list for sure so here's yeah. the thing how do we do uh, so uh if we can ch- just sort of close you off just for a minute <laughs> tommy and just talk yeah, for a good. second and say as fans like I mean, there you you ring a bell. You absolutely ring a bell in terms of how do we give the back half of the field or or any part of the field the the spotlight that these guys that you know the the ones that we know are are already getting as much spotlight as they could possibly deserve or want. So how do we? I mean, I think the whole. I think what you're saying is like. The reason why NASCAR is what it is is we used to give a ton of attention uh, to the back half of the field uh, in terms Everybody. of hey these guys are racing too and we want to give them the guy attention. that finished thirtieth in the standings out there was still on a Coca Cola commercial with the guys that were winning the race. Uh, yeah. It's a great point, and that's I, I think that was what I was trying to say, and I just tip I just tripped all oh, over trying no, to say it, it, but yes, no, that's it. It's like this idea that, you know, Corey LaJoy doesn't matter. He's like insignificant. You know, Corey LaJoy built the seat 
that he then mounted into his own Daytona 500 race car last year. Who else is doing that? Right. And, and we're not even going to talk to him? And it's aluminum, and it's it's incredibly challenging to weld aluminum. Uh, yeah. As someone who has welded really steel, a welding aluminum is exponentially more challenging than welding steel. Yeah. You have an Earnhardt that is struggling to get a full-time ride right now. Jeffrey. Jeffrey and uh, Bobby Dale. Why do people Why do people not just love Jeffrey Earnhardt? Well, maybe because he drives for a small team, and they never freaking talk to him, ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, When's so the last why... time you got you saw him get interviewed on NBC? Never. Yeah, why don't Why don't never. we do that? Why don't we do that? I, I, you know, and I mean, I think there's probably even guys that uh, yourself uh, let's ignore. Tommy Joe Martins in this respect and how you've gone about being uh, a racer and a team manager at times, but how in the, how are we going to get the back half of this field to get, uh, to, to enjoy being a part of the sport if we don't give them a chance to talk? Right. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, so how do we fix it, right? You know, that's the big question. Yep. What are the changes to make? So if I was able to sit down with uh, with Mr. DeWar for a little bit and talk to him, what would be my suggestions, right? Because it's not, it's not worth anything, and this is why everybody's yelled at me online. They're like, oh, we're just complaining. Well, no, not really, because I, I also have some ideas of how you make the thing better, right? Like, it's not any good to just say something is bad if you can't say well, how to fix it. <laughs> that doesn't do a lot of good. So, okay, how do we fix this? Well, first of all, the media people have to do their damn job. Let's just start right there, which that's not going to make me a lot of friends in the media. But they have to (laughs) Uh, do their job. But your blog has been awesome, dude. You you cannot have your job done for you by PR people. That is garbage. You are getting paid by a network to cover a sport. You're getting paid. So think about that. Think about your job. Right now, everybody listening to this has a job. So if your job was to know about 40 people, how well do you think you would know those people? Oh, if it was only 40, I think I'd know them pretty good. You'd probably know them pretty damn well. If your job for an entire year was literally just know 40 people and their stories, you'd probably know them pretty good. Okay, well, why yeah. is that? Literally, none of the people from NBC, from Fox, from any of the networks that cover this thing have ever talked to me outside of Dave Burns, who reached out to me on Twitter when I was running a sticker on my car for Zoe Thurston at Bristol and said, hey, that'd be an interesting story. Let's, I'll have Kelly Stavis come over there and talk to you. And then both of them, when they're done talking to me because it was a rain delay, because that's the only reason I made it on TV, was a rain delay at Bristol. Oh, and they go... Man, they go, man, that was awesome. You're a great interview. Well, yeah, I've been a great interview. You just never talked to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that... You, you didn't even know I existed. Like, I mean, this is the kind of craziness I'm talking about. Ryan Priest ran an entire season, an entire season for JD Motorsports. He gets in a Gibbs car for one race. And I love Steve Letarte on television. Love <laughs> Steve Letarte. He's in a race at New Hampshire, a race that I'm in. And this is why I know this, because I've watched the rebroadcast. Remember, he's already run the entire previous year for JD Motorsports. So now he goes over to Gibbs. Steve Letarte on TV says, look at Ryan Priest. All he is is a local modified racer up here in the Northeast. And he's getting his big shot with Gibbs. And look at what he's doing with it. First time in an Xfinity car. and, And look at what he's able to do. And it's like... Are you freaking kidding me, dude? You covered the series last year. He ran every race in the series. Yeah. Like, how do you not know that? It's your job. And so I think a lot of these people just show up. They get the stories handed to them by the PR people. That's why all the teams put out press releases and stuff. The PR people for these big teams walk over to them with a press kit and say, here are the stories for the weekend. Harvick has averaged a 9.4 finish here at California Speedway. He's a great driver at California. And so you just hear him just 
bleh, just regurgitate the same stuff rather than going up to Kevin Harvick and being like, hey, I saw you uh, you were talking to Blaney after that last race. What were you guys talking about? And he gives you a sound bite that's like, you know what? Screw that guy. Do you, well, do you know what? That's a story. That's a real thing. Or going up to the guy that finished 28th last week and being like, hey, what happened? You got bumped into by the guy that finished 25th. Uh, are you guys okay? And he's like, you know what? I'm never dealing with that son of a bitch ever again. <laughs> I don't want to deal with him. Yeah, I'm never getting around that guy. If he gets around me again, I'm going to wreck him. Well, now at the on the on the grid, you're like, hey, we got to talk to these guys. This yes. is going to be good stuff. Yes, it's absolutely. Like, why, why would you just cut off half the field? Yes, if there's if there's why a guy you cut in... off half the field when the guy that, that got wrecked finishing 28th is yes. like, I don't even know if we're going to make it to the next race. I I was like, about to use you don't the think word going to be more 28. dramatic. <laughs> yeah. So okay, step step one is. The TV people have to do their job, like do their job. And I've seen Jerry Punch get on Twitter and actually say that the TV people have been directed from NASCAR and from the higher ups in TV that we don't need to promote the whole race. Forget the race. That's not what this is about. This is about promoting the stars that are in the race. And that's a bummer. It shouldn't be the stars. It should be the stories. And and well, there's so much better stories than just the stars and you know, this goes back to, I mean, it's not, you know, we don't have that, you know, 100,000 person reach or whatever. But the point is that, like, doing these uh, uh, these driver spotlights on the on the number 33 car today, who had ever heard of uh, whatever his butt was that I had talked about? And and uh, he, he unfortunately passed away, uh, uh, Lou Figaro. I had to go look back again. But, I mean, he passed away, like I said, two of his lifetimes before I was for freaking born you know <laughs> right right but uh, it's really uh it's really cool to hear those stories and there's so many stories that exist out there sure uh, surely some people have boring stories but i i feel like most of them have have really good stories to to tell or, or good everybody has a story that's the thing everybody has a story yeah. it's your job as a journalist to go find out <laughs> right i love Go your i love out. your passion yeah i know you're uh you okay. know excited Here's about it I'm so passionate about this this is why i'm so passionate about this and this is why i have this much tolerance for stuff like this that's a big zero because i i went to school for journalism this is literally what i studied and what i Homeless did for rebels. a job right before i got into racing at a really high level this is what i did so the fact that you got this job just because, well, you were a former driver and now we're just going to hand you the script and you just say this stuff on TV, that is so beneath the whole point of the job, it really frustrates me. And, and to know that there's a directive coming down to these people and they actually think they're doing a great job, to me, it feels like, like, am I the only, like, I feel like I'm the crazy guy where I'm like, what, <laughs> you're doing a terrible job. But yeah, you're all walking around like you're doing a great job. Yeah. Like, what did I miss? Yeah. And so part of that really bothers me. Okay, so whatever. I know we're, we're going off on a big tailspin here. But we said, okay, how do you fix this? It starts there with all the television and media coverage and radio coverage and, and Sirius XM and all of this kind of stuff where you got to include everybody. You just got to include everybody. Like, everybody's mm -hmm. got a story. Now, there's a limit to this. That one guy that runs four or five races – Maybe you can have him on when he runs his race or something like like one of the two, but you're not going to keep going back to that guy. You you need to kind of focus on the guys that are out there a lot. You know, the guys that are running half the season, the guys that are running the full season. Like, give them a little bit of preferential treatment. Like, that's where we probably need to direct it. But from NASCAR and from the uh, from the media, that's got to be a unified effort where we go. You know, we're promoting the whole field, the whole field. I don't care what team it is. I don't care what driver it is. We're talking to everybody just like they're competing to win the race because they all are. They're all mm -hmm. racing for something. I heard Eric McClure, who's, a, who's probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met in racing, unbelievably nice guy, Eric McClure, who raced the Hefty's car for forever, the Hefty trash rag mm -hmm. car for forever. Trash rag. I love it. Oh, yeah. Xfinity. Yeah. Eric there, there at Xfinity. Unbelievably nice guy. Um, unbelievably nice. 
And he was never like a big time driver that was winning races. He always just went out there, ran kind of mid pack, had a few okay finishes. And that's fine. He said that he missed a race at Talladega because he got injured. All right. He missed a race at Talladega because he got injured. And uh, they said, well, it's not that big of a deal because, you know, Eric McClure and that team, they, you know, it's kind of a mid pack team anyway. And Eric McClure was like, because of that, we missed out on driver money at the end of the year. We, we didn't get in the driver points in the top 20. And that driver points money was $100,000 that would have gone to the team. Wow. And it's like, and you're telling me that that didn't matter? Like, that's basically, that was your take was like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. They're not competing for the win. Uh, what? We're all racing for something. All of us. So it's this crazy mixed up notion that we don't matter back there. That has to change. And it's got to start from the top down. It's got to start from the top down. Tommy. Wow. I think our, uh, I think our, uh, whatever our, our carriage is fixing to turn into a pumpkin. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay guys. I gotta, I gotta eventually eat some dinner around whatever here. Whatever it is. Oh it's, yeah. Cause it's only, uh, it's, uh, you're on West coast time out in Vegas. Like it just barely yeah, uh, like snuck in, uh, eight o'clock. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all but, good. Uh, man. Whatever. As always, I love talking to you guys. This uh, is, talk, uh, talk all night if we could. Dude, uh, every time, uh, like we have peaks every like three months and it's when we talk to Tommy Joe Martins. So yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> I love about that, but I appreciate the, I appreciate the thought, fellas. No, guys, let's uh, uh, let's hook up. You are a rock star for our fan base. Anybody that listens to us is thunder excited for when you come on our show. Well, and, and, that, and that's it is because you just say, you know what? I'm going to be Tommy Joe. Well, there's there's and so many people places love honesty. There's and so just ma- being yeah. Sorry, Rusty, I keep interrupting. I don't know. There's so many places where you can go to just hear NASCAR news. But there's only uh, a few places you can go to just hear, you know, like the the nitty gritty. Like uh, we we've said it before, our our show isn't for this is your first time watching a race. It's for you know NASCAR, and and you wanna you wanna get a little deeper. And uh, man, you always bring uh, you always bring the deep. <laughs> I well, love I, it. You know, it's been really cool to me, y'all. You you guys first reached out to me about this, and I was like, "Man, I don't know about these guys. I don't know what these things. You know, well, I, was, I don't know." What fair this assessment. And, and you know, I wanted to do it. You guys were just so genuine and nice, and I could tell you just love the sport and you were passionate about it. And like, I don't mind. I, you know, I don't mind. Like I said, I just first of all, y'all know me now. I just like to talk. So I mean, this mm-hmm. is a big deal for me. I enjoy it. But then I've looked at now all the people you've had on. You know, Brett Moth or whatever, you know, you had Brett Griffin, you had uh, Jesse Awuji. I'm just rolling back through this. Uh, yeah. Jesse Awuji. You've had uh, Kaz Rallo on the show. You've had. Uh, this was awesome. I mean, how, how many drivers now have you had on the show? And I feel like, in a way, it's like you guys, you guys are legit now. It's oh, legit. don't say that. You got a Wait legit to... thing going right now, and that's really <laughs> cool that, that somehow, in this weird way, I was like one of the early adopters. Of the, you know, you're the DC one that legitimized the show. I think That's so. <laughs> you, yeah. you may have been the one that legitimized the show. <laughs> right. Well, that's cool. Like, I'll wear that as a badge. Like, you guys <laughs> absolutely. absolutely deserve to be legitimized. It's just a good fun. You've had Gluck on the show. I know you've had him. Yeah. Uh, you've had, uh, you know, a few other guys, you know, guys that are like, we're talking like hundreds of thousands of Twitter followers and stuff like that. That is like, this is a big deal. So I think it's really cool, uh, which you, you know guys what? have been able to do. And, I'll share. And here's what I would say moving forward. Don't, don't think that you got to aim low anymore. You don't, you can get whoever you want. Just throw them an invite. Oh, you're the man. <laughs> Shoot them out. <laughs> you know, because you know, at this point you can probably get whoever you want. I, and I think Ryan Ellis would be a great guy to get him. Mean, he's such a nice guy. And we, uh, we actually, we, we, we actually had him now to Daytona. We had him two years ago, which is crazy. And we're trying uh, to work uh, on that in his, in his earlier days. And, uh, um, then, uh, you know, he, he started doing some more stuff and, and we sort of lost touch, but definitely would love to have him back. You know, here's, <laughs> so I'll share something with you. That I don't think we've ever shared with the PT and Posse or anybody. Uh oh, here like, we go. No, no, no. Me and Sherman sitting here talking, and and uh, you know we had been to a few of the like tweet ups and stuff. We had met jo- uh, Jeff Glug. This was before we started the podcast, and and then we started yeah. the podcast, and then we went to more of the tweet ups, and we uh, did some more stuff, and and I was like, dude, 
if we got to a tweet up and Jeff Gluck introduced us because uh, because he, he was talking about some other people like oh hey look it's this guy oh hey look it's this guy and I said if if he would introduce hey it's Rusty and Sherwin over there I'm like that would be the pinnacle of this podcast like it's only downhill from there <laughs> now here's the deal we were in Bristol this year and Jeff looked over at us and said hey it's a PTM podcast guys yeah what's up Rusty Sherwin <laughs> and we went oh crap this is as good as we'll ever be. <laughs> I was like, we, we've, we've made it. That's it. It's only downhill from here. That's what I'm telling you, boys, is you guys are 100% very well thought of um, by the people that cover this sport because they just know how much you care about it and how genuine the whole thing is. It's you know, just really cool. Uh, it, it, I feel like a lot of people go through this. It's a humbling thing that, like, Man, we're just uh, we're just doing our thing. We're having fun. That's uh, it. This is all. This is the way it all started, and, and luckily we can continue having fun. Continue. I was just putting the the podcast episode up, and it's funny because on the uh, provider that we use, they're like, "Well, do you want to make this a free show, or you could potentially make two thousand five hundred dollars if you oh do this God. like premium?" I'm like, Lick "What the hell? Is it? <laughs> we're doing like, it for what free. Are you, yeah. What are you talking yeah. about? Like, uh, why do I have to Not choose yet. this every time that I do the damn thing?" <laughs> yeah see but now yeah. what you got to do okay so now you've had gluck on here now you got to make gluck bring you on his podcast or something like that it's like the trade-off we did well Sherwin that's was so on funny i was i was oh, on yeah, i have right. been I on that. yeah ah, we were that's what i'm saying we yeah, were, i have uh, been on gluck's podcast it. at darlington right. yeah at <laughs> darlington right. like a huge race one of the like uh, top and three it races was good, it was a good hit it was it was not bad. Well, and and so here's the thing. Uh, I was supposed to be there too. Like it was supposed to be PTM is on the podcast, and I had a, a family emergency thing come up, uh, and I wasn't able to make it. And kudos to Sherwin. Uh, I think one of the uh, like Sherwin was like, I, I'd really like to see the race, but I'd really really like to be on Gluck's podcast. <laughs> so it, it was, that was the deciding factor. Like, yeah. Right, so Rusty had a fam- a familial deal. My, my grandmother passed away. And like, like we were as here. we were I was here. Yeah. Yeah. As we were loading up the truck, I got the phone call and I was like, dude, I gotta, I, I can't go anymore. As like the truck was loaded up, we had to move all my stuff over to Sherwin's car. Uh, not all my stuff, because I've got a truck and Sherwin's got a car. Yeah, right. So uh, <laughs> he he figured it out and went, and and most of that decision I think had to be uh, or wasn't like I said, it wasn't about being on or being at Darlington. It was about <laughs> Gluck had already told us to be on the show. So yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we love Darlington, and being on Jeff Gluck's show was was awesome, and Sherwin killed it. So I, you know, I, I obviously and I don't later. know, I don't know how you, I don't know how you find it. Like, I don't think it's uh, archived the same way ours are. Mm. But uh, yeah, I was on Jeff's show. We had, I did about thirty minutes, uh, just hollering in his. Like, it was so weird because, like, the way he does podcasts is like he sticks a microphone in your face. <laughs> Right. And like, really like, like whoa, he, whoa, he, whoa, he asks whoa, you a whoa, question, whoa. and then like he sticks it in your face, and you're like, what? Uh, like, and I, I know I'm sitting here on YouTube and everybody's watching or whatever. And like, I already have a microphone in my face and I'm just talking, but like, it was really funny for him to just go, I'm a, and then stick it in your face. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, it was, it was awesome. So man, oh, no, he's, he doesn't mess around with it. He really does. He's like, so blah, 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 blah. And just right in your face, like doesn't waste any time with it at all. I love it. So true. I love it. You're like, whoa, dude, listen, I, I know hey, you're now, into this on. thing, <laughs> but I'm a little bit intimidated by this, like, a hand, right? At, like, there's only a few people who put hands, like, at this, you know, point. <laughs> oh, and like, that's he a guy that has it. covered stuff for a national media outlet, I think is 100%, and no offense, guys, the best person covering this sport right now in the entire world. I agree. Uh, uh, we agree. Yeah, That's why we subscribe world. to his Patreon. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think your, your top three journalists right now, or whatever. I mean, I, I'd leave out some people there. That's not fair. You know, it's not, I'd probably have to come up with like a top ten. Um, <laughs> but just of the people that I just go, man, these guys are good. Gluck, uh, Matt Weaver. All yes, the stuff he does Weaver. With, with short track stuff is so good. 
Um, Kelly Crandall, Bob yes. Pockris yes. for ESPN is so awesome. Yeah, um, I think you're Dustin, – Dustin Long does a great job for NBC. He yes, does a really love good job. Dustin Long. We'd love um, to get him on the show. We haven't had him yet. Uh, you know, yeah, there's, we. There's, I, there's so many people. That I think are, we just need to really reach out. Good. Like, uh, you know, on the inside portion of it, unfortunately, Bob like Bob was totally like, uh, yeah, well, I'll be on the show, and then he checked with his, his employer, and he was like, I can't. Uh, sorry, I can't do the show. Yeah, uh, but right. yeah, go it, figure. Yeah, ESPN right. I think didn't we probably have, let somebody have any fun. Yeah, go figure. No, no, it's, yeah, well, it's okay. We... Bob's such a cool guy that that we just take so, it in stride. We're like, dude, I I get it. I don't and, even. And I love get, I lose my train of thought uh, at the uh, <laughs> at the, at the tweet, tweet ups, ups when, you talk when to Bob. Bob and Jeff yeah. and uh, are They're there because so Bob and Jeff are always there. They're mm-hmm. so smart and they know so much. It is just like bewildering to me how much Bob Pockris knows. Well, that's and even good Gluck point. will say that. He'll be like, I mean, I don't know this, but Bob will know. It's like <laughs> yeah. that. So he's no, like that's... the encyclopedia over there, basically. Encyclopedia I mean, so is a I great way to put it. Every time that's I talk to him. That's a great point. Him. We've met, so, and, and at those tweet-ups, we met Jer- uh, Jerry Jordan, uh, who does kicking the tires. Yeah, yeah. That's been awesome. But Bob will be, uh, the crazy thing is, well, uh, well, uh, Bob, what's, uh, you know, what's the story this time? Well, in 1994, Blah 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 blah, and you're like, I I know he didn't look this up. He it's actually, like, Bob, you're only two years older than us. Like, what are you this? talking? About? Yeah, what the, like, what the hell, how do you Bob? know all this? Even guys that I've I've had some uh, some debates with, um, like Dave Moody. I respect the heck out of Dave Moody. I mean, he's got to he's got to do a radio show every day for like four hours. Are we making you that know, noise? That's got to be. It's like so hard to do, you know. And and so he's a he's a you know he stirs up some crap every now and then. Um, <laughs> But you know, I, I well, he respect. has to because he has a radio show yeah. every day. There, there's respect there. Uh, Mike Joy is just unbelievably good. He's right. just so good. Um, yeah, we did, you know, we just did like, this you know, two days guys in a row been for a long time. <laughs> uh, you know that there, there's guys there you look at and you go, okay. Uh, you know, I just respect the heck out of these guys. And one story here before we close it out. Yeah. So throwback race at Darlington. Woo-hoo. We're actually, you know, they do. Um, who's in the pot? Because they announced this like last week. It's going to be old Ned Jarrett up there in the booth. Uh, oh, that's awesome. With, uh, he just went into the Hall of Fame. I just went brain dead on the guy's name. Um, he was up there this past year, the broadcaster. He just got elected in the Hall of Fame. Oh, Ned uh, Jarrett. That's no, what you just said. Uh, oh gosh. All right. Wait, oh, I'm, Buck I'm, Baker. I'm, no, I'm looking it up. We'll we'll play like the Hall of Fame. Oh, we're, hey, we're just on YouTube now, so we can wait a minute and figure it out. Childress Hendricks, Mark Martin, this Raymond Park. Yeah, Park. Wow, Kent Raymond Park. So Kent Squire, Kent Squire, right? Kent Squire. Kent Squire. There it is. Woo! Yep, I was Kent there. Squire. It's unbelievable. Um, and probably I think he's the best of all time when it comes to covering the sport. Kent Squire. I'm at Daytona, 2016. It's my first race. In a truck, uh, or no? Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's my second. So it's 2017. So it's last year. It's last year. Um, and I'm driving for MDM, and so I go down there uh, for Daytona. We're doing driver intros, and I get lined up, and I just notice Ken Squire standing over there, and I'm I just sit there and I go, man, I gotta go talk to this guy. Which I don't really do that a lot, honestly. For the most part, I kind of keep it my distance type of deal. But I go, man, I got to talk to Ken Squire. Hell yeah. And so I walked over there and I said, uh, hey, Mr. Squire, uh, my name's Tommy Jim Martin. He goes, oh, I know who you are. He said, great to see you. And he kind of cut me off before I could really say my name. <laughs> and I was like. And I, it, it literally just, I kind of like stopped for a second. I was like, uh, hey, bull spit. I didn't, really you don't know know follow, I didn't know how to really like follow that up. And still to this day, that's like one of the most weird out of body experiences that I've had in this deal is that like, why does Ken Squire know who I am? Like that was just yeah. this weird thing. And we sat there and talked for a minute about Daytona and the renovations that they had done. And just like, what in the world is going on right now? Uh, so, you know, that little bit of sense of your place in the world and, you know, what you do, you kind of lose sight of it because it's, you know, you're working so hard and it's this far away from you. 
and then to have somebody that's just that well respected and everything and, and that person to have known what you've gone through a little bit that's a really cool that's a really cool feeling yeah man that is super cool uh, and that, i love it like i love it i i i don't have an intelligent no, no, thing we've to had, say about that we've had that's maybe cool. we've had maybe one or two like and th- this is totally like junior to what you're talking about tommy but uh, maybe one or two times where we don't know somebody and they're they're like you're the ptm podcast guys we're like yeah oh poop uh yeah i mean who who are <laughs> you, you? Don't even know how I, to respond uh, to it yeah yeah, yeah. I, and so even that that small amount of joy to think about that in terms of what you're talking about yeah, i mean that must squire is yeah like, yeah exactly victory exactly Kid squire cut you off in the middle of telling me your name and be like oh i know who you are yeah oh <laughs> yeah. man I, I, that... well, you're like wait what <laughs> fantastic <laughs> why yeah, why that's, that's exactly you know, that's like my reaction every earlier, time question why wait why yeah. why what are you doing you must be bored so i didn't ask <laughs> i didn't ask the follow-up <laughs> yeah yeah man the youtube fans got right, a shitload of awesome extra content tonight yeah they did yeah they did I, uh i'm gonna go eat some food yeah awesome buddy talk to you guys. let's uh let's that's talk before good. atlanta or uh, you know let's hook it up sure we, I mean, would love to see you guys there. If you guys want to do a live spot there, I'll be down there. We dude, of course we we'll want to figure do a live it out. Spot. We'll, we'll make it happen. It out. We'll make it happen. It'll be fun. Good deal. Tommy, right, you're the man. Fellas, enjoy. Thanks a lot, brother. See ya. <laughs> there it is, Sherwin. Let's uh, let's go uh, off the YouTube. Yeah. If you're on the YouTube, you just got like a whole other podcast worth of of stuff. So yeah, almost another you, hour. That's what I'm saying. I, like we've done like three hours plus of content on YouTube at least for the last two days. Oh yeah. You know, before we did this, I was like, man, what are we even gonna like? We're gonna what are we exhaust, gonna talk about? No, no. Like with Spotter Brett, we're gonna exhaust all of the like. Oh, here's, like I thought all my energy was gone, right for him, right? But then. We gathered it back in, and we gave it all to Tommy, and Tommy and gave it, everything well, and, he had. And Tommy to just us. throws it at it. So, anyway, hey, YouTubers, you're the best. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for listening to like a second podcast tonight. Yeah, appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, wait, wait how it's we did forty five or fifty minutes. We've been here. I can tell you, we've been live YouTube, on YouTube or for, off the iTunes. I we've mean. been live on YouTube for two hours and eight minutes. Ah! So that was right before. So, yeah, Give me we, some. we did like two podcasts on there. Hey, you're all the best. We'll talk to you all later. Peace. Whoop.